Today's episode of the Nate Land Podcast is brought to you by Fabric, uh, Sunday, Electric E-Bike, mm. and Helix Sleep. Hello, folks, <clears throat> and hey, Bear, welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. We are here, uh, excited to be back. A uh, bit of a weekend. <laughs> yeah, it was. We were at least all in the same place, so we don't have to go around <laughs> and ask everybody where they were at. Uh, but it was, uh, yeah, it was a wild, wild weekend. You know, I'm trying to fix the microphone. Uh, it's fine. I'll do it with it. Guys, don't worry about it. Uh, I guess I'll carry this podcast. I got to carry that show Saturday night. Uh, no, every, uh, it was, uh, uh, so for those of, uh, you know, maybe not everybody knows what went on, but, uh, we did Bridgestone, uh, arena, uh, Johnson city on, uh, Friday night. Yep. Johnson city was great. Very cool. Uh, yeah. I love that. I finally got to not bomb in Johnson city. I mean, yeah. That was great. You redeemed yourself. Yeah. Felt yeah, good. yeah. Yeah. They were excited when everybody came out and, uh, we got to hang out and played some, uh, I tell you what, we played little uh, like a mini like ping pong, not pickleball, but uh, uh, either the ping pong, but on a tennis court, right, with a tennis ball, with a tennis ball. Isn't that called tennis? Well, it's 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 close. We had tennis ball, pickleball rackets. We just had what we had, and then oh, okay. we were on the tennis court, but we we shrunk it in, and we stood like in the middle. Yeah, okay. and then we kind of played ping pong. And I mean, we're doing this. It's you know one in the morning. Mm. Lights luckily cut on at uh, that ETSU and uh, or the high school or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I got got a little news for you. Uh, oh, breakfast! <laughs> Quite the player, dude. I had no idea. I heard this. Yeah. But I oh had no my idea. Gosh. He went through a stretch where he was just dominating. <laughs> He was a problem. Yeah. <laughs> and it his serve is just it cuz we so if you picture a tennis court uh you know you got the very far back lines and then but like just the the front lines that usually have to serve over we were just standing in the two the front squares. Yeah. Isn't that how pickleball is played? Uh now there's another line. Oh. But so we we're just so the out of bounds was yeah, we're in the middle, the the four squares in the middle, and out of bounds with the lines. Because we're playing with tennis ball and these rackets, it's hard to hit. What's far. a pickleball racket look like? Just a wood. It's just wood. Like a wooden paddle. Oh, wooden okay. paddle. Uh, and so, yeah, we're just trying to make up a game, yeah. you know, with what we got. And the game was very fun. Me and Aaron were on a team. And then uh, Bates played the whole time. And then Chase and Eric, the barber, and my son Chase. <laughs> Uh, and so they would switch, and I mean, it's Bates. It's <laughs> it's it's pretty crazy. Uh-huh. And uh, if you're thinking Bates handled this with a lot of grace, you are wrong. You are wrong. <laughs> he started talking serious trash, loud, dude. loud, loud. And then I would make a point, and he would be so condescending. Good work, big guy. You did. You yeah. did it. You nice, got one. Nice job, big fella. So <laughs> what happened? Is this some skill that you knew you had that you've not shared with people? Or no, my goal was just. Aim for Nate's head. Okay. Well, it was someone as old as you and that late. Those are things that don't go together. Yeah. And moving. So this is. I mean, it. It was. We we watched a true. You know, like Michael Jordan flu game mm-hmm. of you. But his flu is. It was just late at night. His flu is <laughs> late at night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of this made up ping pong tennis pickleball racket game what if late nights are like the thing that you like that's when your secret power comes out and what, you've been sleeping all this time. yeah what if all yeah like older people just go like if they only knew how the, the, their muscles just move mm-hmm. were you sore you weren't even sore the next day you felt no, fine no. the moonlight oh, comes in and just yeah it's not he doesn't you know the he doesn't move it's like a werewolf it, he moves with a purpose yeah mm-hmm. it's a i would say it's like carmelo anthony in basketball, it's Carm- graceful. Yeah, Carmelo Anthony, when you watch him play, was like never. He was so good, but he never looked like he was the fastest person out yeah, there. But he yeah. just you couldn't stop the moves, right? And that's what it was with Bates. But he was just, and then he would serve it where you would just get caught like it's so far back. 
We had some. Uh, I switched it up at one point. I started charging the net, and that <laughs> that helped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of took them off. We did end up winning, but we but did win. There was a stretch where Brian was. We were worried. Well, come on. We dominated the first game. Then you guys just started picking on little Chase. Um, just <laughs> left me out of it. We just couldn't let you Bates in- serve. You injured him. Yeah, to give you an idea of how serious this was, I mean, Chase sprained his ankle during this game. The 23-year-old mm. guy gets hurt. <laughs> yeah. And the, Brian's carrying that side of the, the Then net. you put yeah. – I end up with Travis out there who's smoking a cigar That's while true. he's playing. <laughs> Travis, yeah, he had to play with three different people. Travis played. If Travis had just moved out of the way and just let me handle it by yeah. myself. Yeah, Travis also so a guy, not a big mover. You had a guy on your team – smoking and another guy with a sprained ankle. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty good that you did what mm-hmm. you did. Yeah. And one more with a bunch of tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That'll drag you down. Yeah. 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 Tattoos don't seem like uh, – not a lot of that on tennis courts, I don't think. I don't think so. I don't I don't, I don't. think so. Yeah. But he was – I mean, the key was just not to let him serve. Once Bates served, I mean, because he – I mean, he ripped me apart serving. <laughs> Uh, and so it was like, if we could get him not to serve, we could handle, like we could do some stuff and charge in the net. But I mean, yeah, me and Aaron, we won the, yeah, the last two games, but I mean, the first game where he had just chased one person, it was, it was wild. And he was dominant all the other games. We just, we made, me and Aaron attacked talked. his teammates. Me and Aaron talked and we figured some stuff out and we came at it a little different. Yeah. Wow. But it was fun. So. It was fun. Uh, what was that game we played with the dice? Uh, Grego. Yeah, that was fun too. I yeah, never played that before. Yeah, yeah Grego. It's uh, a lot of some other people know this game as the dice. It's like you got to roll dice. You start at uh, uh, you roll the dice, and it's the first one to get to a hundred, and you can stop at any point. So you can go. You could roll your dice and get to twenty five, and be like, I'm gonna stay. And then because if you roll a one, you go back to the last point that you either stopped at. If you rolled two ones, snake eyes, you go all the way back to zero. We played it uh, We played it with uh, my n- nieces and daughter and all them mm-hmm. for, you know, I was like, and then we put like some money out there for them and whoever wins. And we did it over Christmas. They and got it into was, it, man. It, it's, uh, it's not meant for a game for children. <laughs> <laughs> the stress <laughs> Yeah, because it it's you you know you kind of like stop and so you roll and like you could you could you can try to go zero to hundred it's very hard to do and so you're adding the dice so it's two twos you're like four and then mm-hmm. the next one you add you, you like get an eight so now you got twelve and then you can stop where you want to stop so you're just slowly building up and so the kids were doing we had them doing that I didn't really think about it and then it's just the m- emotional toll it takes on. 10 year olds is a ton. <laughs> so they are stopping at like, they get to like 22 stop, then they get to like 32 stop. They just stopping the whole time. Yeah. And uh, my niece, Maya, bless her heart, got, I mean, she got all the way to like 98 and then rolled two ones. All the way back. She goes back to zero. Mm, yeah. So she's a mess <sighs> when this happens. And then my then Good. then Harper just sits there and then slowly gets it back up. These are Harper Meyer, the ones that came up with Bob Ripple pants. Right. They heckled me all weekend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so then Harper ends up winning. And then once she won, she walked away from the table. And then uh I she was emotional and I didn't realize that. And she cried. And so then I'm like, Well, I'm making this this was not my best parenting. <laughs> I would this is one that they they would bring up. And they show, well, what about that day? You're like, that was not a good day. That was not my strong suit. <laughs> and I had to, and Harper split, they split, Harper split the money and they, but it was like, we kind of learned a lesson. Like that was like, whew, yeah. like that was a lot. I think that's good though. Put a little stress, you know, get to, uh, get you. They had it. There was know? a thousand bucks on the line though. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, they split the 500. Yeah. 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 It was, yeah, it was very stressful. And it was like, and it, afterwards you're like, yeah, yeah, this is not, why did I think yeah. this was a good idea? It was, and then my dad, because my dad put in money too, because he thought it was a good idea. Bargettis were big game people. Yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of games, a lot of makeup games, either made up or it's a game we played, but we like, we like some games. I think guys in general, when we get together, we, we become kids again. Yeah. We were in the dressing room in Johnson City. <clears throat> Aaron takes a coat hanger, throws it, tries to hook it on a pole. 
Yeah. Next thing I know, we got a game of horse going with a coat hanger. <laughs> Dusty walks in. I thought he was going to chastise us, and he goes, can I get in on this? Now yeah. there's three of us playing horse with a coat Why hanger. Why didn't I get in? At one time, we said, Nate's preparing for the biggest show of his life, and we're in here playing horse with a coat hanger. <laughs> I think I would like to play horse yeah. with a coat hanger. Well, yeah. that, well, next time, we'll yeah. get you in. I'm never going to have y'all out again. I know. That's the, that's <laughs> the hard part. Uh, well, yeah, you know, we were in the one dressing room, so we were just yeah. in there like, like, well, let's do something. Yeah. I had a pretty good shot with a coat hanger, though. Yeah? Yeah. That's cool, man. Nobody talks <laughs> Nobody talks about yeah. it. But. I mean, cool. we stopped at H because nobody yeah. else could do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so fun time, Johnson City. Uh, Johnson City was great. They were all so nice. And then, uh, so then we... Uh, people asked about the inmates afterwards. We got the emails about it. Oh, really? Yeah, people said, what was with all the inmates there after the show? We saw them walk by us after the show. I don't know. I, th- I think they were there to help clean up. Yeah, yeah. I think that happens in some of these places. I mean, I've seen some other places. Uh, when I was in Arkansas somewhere, there was a group, and it's guys that are like, went to jail, and like they got to get mm-hmm. sober, and then they go, you know, we talk, because we talked to one of them. He was very, like, he just came up and talked to us. And I mean, you know, they they don't know what they're even doing. And he's talking to us. He's like, and then we tell him, well, we're comedians. And he's like, well, he goes, let me see uh, his kid, 21 years old. And he, Whoa. did I tell this story on here? No, yeah, no. yeah, you did. I did, yeah. And oh. he tells, he goes, he goes, let me see some of your act. He tells me to just do my act in front of him. <laughs> and we're like, well, it doesn't really work like that, you know? And he's like, come on, you know? <laughs> he's like, come on, I'm in jail. Yeah. yeah. Give me a joke. <laughs> yeah. He was, uh, yeah, changing his life. Which is good, uh, but yeah, there's a lot hopefully. of inmates. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> hopefully, that was Dusty's meet and greet line. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the inmates were. Yeah, they came to watch. Uh, yeah, I don't. We don't know what it was. We saw him walk by with a uh, the a sheriff kind of behind him. Very it looked like you. They could look like it was uh, if you saw a teacher with kids walking them. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they're going around. So yeah, they don't really give you a big heads up about that. Not that you would, you know. It was wild to look out the tour bus door and just see a ton of people in orange jumpsuits had just passed by. Yeah. You don't see that a lot. You don't see a lot of road. You still see some, but you don't see a lot of road crews anymore. They must know? see it in John City because they, no heads up. No. I mean, they're, you know, and they, they there was, and there was kids, we, there's a lot of kids driving around night doing wheelies yeah. and. They just come over and they were driving by us. They were yelling at us because it seemed a bunch of eighty year old men playing <laughs> tennis ball, picket ball, <laughs> and just like going like you know. What was that other game y'all played that I did not get in? Wall ball, wall ball. Yeah, they had a they had a uh, wall ball. Was uh, I got hit? Yeah, even after we said yeah. no more hitting, no more hitting, because it was. If every if it's it's a game you play growing up, wall ball was the yeah, best. I'll do. Very easy game to get hurt at. By the way, it rained. It poured that day, so we're on this tennis court that's very wet, a slippery tennis court. Yeah. yeah. And so we found a wall, and so because we were playing, it was dark. A lot of times we're throwing football and stuff, and then we always do it pretty late because it's like you know you get done with the show, you get kind of fired up, like you know you know it's not the old days of going out partying or something. You know you're just kind of like. Let's do something. And yeah. so um, so we were playing, as, and it was wet. And then so we go over to the tennis court, and, uh, and so then they ended a wall there. So then we start throwing wall ball. And uh, and I was like, you know, wall ball, if I, – I, I don't know. I don't – you know, I, I imagine everybody knows. I don't know. I don't know if it's a Southern game or if it's an all-kids game. I don't know. Uh, I played it all the time. Yeah, well, What's the too. game? So – you uh probably not a trailer park game because the ball doesn't bounce walls. back. You don't yeah. have yeah. a lot of sturdy walls. Yeah, yeah. 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 You don't yeah. throw a ball against it aluminum. Just drops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no brick structures. Yeah. Where you... yeah. 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 The tennis. Yeah. The, the tennis ball just off the rocks. Just you just. I mean ricochet everywhere. No yeah, you, one throw, knows. you throw. You throw a ball at a wall in a trailer. You're knocking off p- paintings and, yeah. and, and, and photos and. <laughs> So you throw a ball against a wall, and if you, and then you catch it and you throw it back. If you drop the tennis ball, so if you try to catch it and drop it, you have to run and touch the wall before someone grabs the tennis ball and th- throws it either at you or and the wall. You were at the wall. Oh, okay. And if they hit you or the wall first, then you're out. Okay. And but if you also catch it in midair, mm-hmm. 
So uh, so we're playing that, and then I was like, y'all started before me. I went and uh, changed. I was like, it was one of those, I was like, I had like, uh, you know, some sweatpants on. I had something, and then some joggers on. And then you're like, oh, we're about to get after it. Yeah. <laughs> so let me go put some shorts on. And so then I come back, and I and then I was like, Hey, no, I know you're supposed to hit and wall ball the person, but let's just not do that. I got yeah. kind of a big weekend coming up. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I don't need to get hit. I, none of us need to get hit. I don't have a black eye. Or, I, I'm 44. I, I just don't want to get hit by a tennis ball anymore. I'll, I'll yeah. play the games, but like I don't need to. And uh, then immediately Aaron's like, "Well, I already hit Chase." So <laughs> he drilled Chase. So then we play, and then Chase hits me. Mm-hmm. It hits me hard. Pretty hard, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the back. But then I also slid into the wall one time and like jammed my wrist up. And I was like, uh, I was like, I'm not, I'm not, I can't go out there and Bridgestone with. So that's when we switched because it was like, this is like, because you run so hard at the wall. Yeah. You could and say the wrist injury was maybe why you didn't play pickleball as well. Could be. Yeah, that's could probably be. part of it. <laughs> part that's of why it. Brian played so well because he sat he out set wall out. ball. He sat out so wall. So he ball. had a fresh body. Mm-hmm. Play so well because I dominate. Yeah, he does good. I mean, he just the serve. It was a perfect size court for you. <laughs> Every the elements were all in your favor: tennis ball, wooden racket, <laughs> and just smaller tennis court. <laughs> it was just perfect. It switched from <clears throat> late at night, old person. All elements were against me. To now, it's all perfect for me. It was perfect yeah. for you. It you was got some flashback up. to those horse moments. Yeah, Brian's a deceptively good athlete. He did dominate me in horse one time outside of a hotel. And that was late yeah. at night with low lighting, too. So maybe that's kind of where you thrive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because now we our eyes work like his eyes. <laughs> and Even playing field. Yeah, even playing field. That night, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, man, it's hard to see. And he's like, looks like it's noon right now to me. I'm like Bane in <laughs> yeah. Dark Knight. Oh, yeah. I was born in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think darkness is your ally? <laughs> I was born in it. <clears throat> all right. So then, uh, by the way, we all we were all on the bus except Dusty. Dusty drove himself to Johnson City That's and true. then drove back. Uh, so we appreciate you hanging with us, yeah. Dusty. <laughs> That's why I missed the tennis court game. I went back to my hotel and went to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Because you had to get up and drive back. But that was fun. We're glad to... Yeah, you know, we I, saw you a little bit. Um, <laughs> had a great time. I will talk to you more today on this podcast than I talked to you the entire two days on the show. Yeah, probably so. Probably so. I knew we'd be back here on Monday, just hanging. Yeah, you know, I didn't want to like overdo it. Yeah, mm, it worked you know. out well for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, you guys might want some conversation where I'm like, I don't believe that kind of stuff. You know. Yeah. What I mean? <laughs> yeah, you may want to just have a normal conversation without hearing that. That's a, true. It was a, a beautiful night. A with the theory stars. about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We didn't need to. Yeah, we loved. To, we talked about the moon yeah. a little bit, and it was nice just to just to appreciate the moon without yeah. just going like just feel the cooling light of the moon without me having yeah. to tell you why it's colder than the sun. Yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so then, so we wake up, Bridgestone reading. So when I woke up there, like, uh, I was kind of like, well, I, I, I kept everything normal because I didn't, I was like, if I go home, if I go, like, I was going to see everybody. I was like, I just didn't want to be running around town. So I was like, we just did it like a normal gig. Woke up there, went and ate, you know, hung out at Bridgestone. But the show was, uh, then the show starts, it filled up. Everybody destroyed. Uh, everybody did great. Uh it was uh, very overwhelming. I mean, it was, it was. It's like it's even hard to wrap your head on today. Uh, we, I'm posting it today. We're announcing it, but it, I mean, I announced it that night. If you're there, it is the largest crowd that's ever been at Bridgestone Arena. Insane. Nineteen thousand three hundred sixty-five people, and uh, the stage was so small. It was <laughs> the stage could fit in this room. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. And it was. Uh, that was probably the craziest thing to me, just to be like how small that stage was. Yeah. And just to Some be tight turns. Yeah. It really reminds you of like old WWF back in the day where they had these huge, they would be doing the Royal Rumble and they mm-hmm. would have these huge stadiums and just mm. this little ring in the middle. Yeah. And then, you know, even the walk to the stage felt yeah. like that. When I walked back, I was giving fives to people like, yeah, yeah, like yes. I was in WWF. Yeah. 
I, I kept it. waiting for your music to play while I was up there. You just to come in and interrupt my set. Yeah. yeah. Body so, slam, hit you with a chair. <laughs> when we did sound check, Dusty walked out there. Dusty thought that the stage was going to rotate. Yeah. I thought on your special, the stage was rotating. Like, no. I had it not, was going to turn. Like, I yeah. thought that it turned a little bit the whole time you were on the stage. So Dusty yeah. was thinking, I'll just stand still. Yeah. The stage yeah. will do the work. That's <laughs> what I, the round is what I had in my mind the whole time is that it spun a yeah. little bit as you yeah. go around. <laughs> yeah. Like, not fast. You know, right. you're going to hold on. It, it would be very funny to do one and have it go pretty fast. And then you're, <laughs> yeah. you're like, Wow, that's, you know, that's <laughs> tough, But huh? Nate did, what'd you do, an hour 10? Yeah. Something like that. If it did one rotation for Nate, we did seven minutes for us. <laughs> it would just have to really go yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. We were thinking it's one of those things on a playground that <laughs> spins around. A merry-go-round? Is that what it's called? Yeah. I thought a merry-go-round had the a horses carousel. on Really? Yeah. What did you call it? I don't know. I just call a playground? it the thing that spins. This, this thing that spins on the yeah. playground. That's what you thought it was called? The thing that spins on the <laughs> I playground? I thought it might have a name, but I, I thought a yeah. merry-go-round was the horses at the mall. No, I think people would say that. Yeah. But it's, uh, yeah. It's a carousel. It could be carousel. Carousel's yeah. a camera. No, no, no. Maybe no. named after the, <laughs> the ride. <Yeah. laughs> all right, all right. Anyway. Yeah. Just sitting there just flick them. Travis on the yeah. side of the stage. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Travis I'm thinking, got the, He's got like, the upper body to do it, too. He could do he's, it. He's, he's, he's a Faster than gorilla. one rotation an hour. But, you know, still, yeah. I thought, you know, I thought. They do it with bands because uh, they move. But, like, at, at, even at the when I was in the round, they don't. Because you're just moving the whole time. Yeah, with your special, I really thought that stage mm -hmm. was spinning a little. I don't know why, I guess. But I, I love the round because yeah. I love the the pacing of it, and you're just kind of always making a circle, and, like, it makes you move, and, you know, did you like it? Because y'all have never done it. I never, I never done, done, it. done it. It was hard, <clears throat> a little hard to get used to at first, and at one time I'm like, I feel like I need, I'm maybe going too fast. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm really making some rotations here. I'm mm. dizzy, and I don't know how to get off stage now. <laughs> yeah. So I, one time I stopped and started going the other direction. <laughs> yeah. Just to mix it up a little bit. But it was. You got to like, it, it, I mean, it takes time to, you got to get used to it, but you got to get to, eventually you get to a point where you're not, it's it's in your mind a little, mm -hmm. like to make sure you keep moving. Uh, but it was, uh, you just, you know, because you kind of go back and you, you I'll do a circle, then you go back the other way, and then you you're just kind of always... Yeah, I mean, several things I felt like were, were at play at once, right? For one, I'm not used to performing for 19,000 people at one time. Yeah. And then I'm doing... 365, 19,000. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I'm doing a bit of a shorter set that I'm used to, and then I'm on a different stage that yeah. I'm used to. So it's like, I mean, it was exciting. But mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm up there like, like Brian, I'm like, I'm moving because I feel like if I'm not moving... The people behind me are not getting a show. Yeah. So I'm like, I got to move, but that's not, I don't even move around much at all on stage. Yeah. That's why this is, I mean, you're, you're going to move. I, I'm not a big mover around either, but that's going to change as you're, you're about, to, you're, you're doing some theaters and as yeah. you're doing stuff and you, you won't, you don't, you're never going to move enough to be like out of what you are, but. You end up having to like as the places get bigger, you just you just do a little more movement. No one's ever gonna think we are big movers on stage. Yeah. But we will feel I mean, I'll feel like I'm just like uh animated going crazy. But it's you're never gonna be like Dane Cook or Chris Rock pacing the stage. Like yeah. you just mm -hmm. it's it's but you do but you do like it's it's nice especially when you're in like the round and the circle because I mean I, I you can just feel like you can talk more with your hand. I mean that's the whole that's what I'm trying to go for is like you're trying to make it be I want I want everybody to feel like I'm just talking to them and telling them a story. Like just which is me and one person hanging out. And so it's like you eventually just it's it's kind of fun. Like it's but you figure out like, oh here's how you do it and here's how you move and it, it just gradually happens because I was there. I mean, I used to never, I didn't move at all. Yeah, I like get clubs. Yeah, I still don't. I don't in clubs. I mean, I got a little. I got a little rock that I do, kind of back and forth. But yeah, but adding the spinning element yeah. was new. Yeah, you know, I'd like to have a chair at kind of either end of the stage, and and as I get older and sitting down becomes acceptable, I could sit in one chair, walk to the other, and then walk back, and then that'll be my move. <laughs> 
Yeah. You have two chairs or just one yeah, chair? Yeah, two chairs on stage. So you just go walk and walk sit in between to, the yeah. chairs? Yeah, back from one chair to the next. I think people will be thinking about that a lot. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'd like to do. Yeah. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I could see. I, I want you get to a day where you're like, hey, I'm gonna go sit down out there. That'd be nice. You gotta reach a you know, you gotta, you gotta reach, reach a, place. a point. Yeah. And I think when you're old enough, then you go, I gotta sit down. I'm old enough or big enough. Yeah, to yeah. Be, yeah. And I don't know which one's gonna come first. You know <laughs> what I mean? You know. Uh you get old enough or big enough and you can sit down. The majority of people look like they were watching on the Jumbotron. So there was always cameras. Yeah. No matter where you were, they were seeing your face. So every time you yeah. turned, they were so good at cutting to a different camera <clears throat> yeah. angle. So it, yeah, I was working on trying to get a bigger circle going because I felt like at first I was doing too small of a yeah, circle. Yeah, me too. Almost like I was just spinning around. <laughs> me too. Mm. It's like a figure skater. Yeah. yeah. Just wobbling around like that. The first time, the first big laugh I got, that felt, that's an odd sensation yeah. for it to come from everywhere. Yeah. Because you're just so used to it just coming straight at you. Six minute mark. Yeah. <laughs> when you brought up Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> now, that did feel good to bring Dusty up. Like, yeah, big applause. Aaron killed. Yeah. And then yesterday we're in the car and Ruth said, Yeah, I like really like that Aaron's that Carhartt joke is really funny. And then later on she said, I like that she and then the third time she's like, I really like that baseball card. And I was like, Enough. Yeah. <laughs> His wife I, thinks I'm the worst comic in Nashville. Not, I'm sick of you talking true. about how yeah. great Aaron is. I had uh, someone in the meet and greet line told me my car joke was great. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. And I go, I appreciate it, man. I go, you know, I got, you came know, up with that on, on today. My neighbor was at the show. A couple of neighbors. Did you come up with that joke on today? Because you said it earlier when we were hanging out. I had, I had had a bit about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But my neighbor talked about how much they liked you, too. Yeah, oh, you were good. great. <laughs> but I wasn't doing the bid in conversation, just so you know. He was working it in. He tried it. <laughs> he felt it. I mean, because I was like, I didn't realize you had the bit, and then you did the joke that <laughs> night, and I'm like, is he just working bits yeah. on us? <laughs> like, because we had a fun, like, we just walked, we walked around. That's what the good thing, we got there early. Like, I try to do that with these venues, especially if you're in these arenas. You never know how long you're going to get to do this kind of thing. And then, so, it was like, we walked and we went in everybody's suite. We went everybody's all the way to the top. I mean, we walked around for a couple of hours. Yeah. Set out watching everybody. Downtown was so crazy. Uh, so many people were downtown. Uh, even during the day, uh, we had to start the show not to like 740, 745. Because, I mean, people just couldn't get in. Yeah. Because there was so many people. And uh, everybody was super cool about that. That's what I love the environment that is in there, and uh, it's just really good people. Everybody, you know, everybody there is just, I mean, a wonderful person. And because you're like, you start late, Travis made an announcement about it, and I think everybody's like, yep, no, that's understandable. Yeah, we get it. yeah. And then they go, and they're just so nice. And it's so, it's, yeah, it's unreal. It was, uh, I almost I did I, like because I was like wondering how to handle it, and I almost cried when I walked out. So I did a thing at the beginning. We showed like a video clip, and then I walked out like from the kind of dressing room onto the stage with a camera following me. And it was like I was trying to take it all in there, and I and I almost cri- I, like I was I was I would have cried. Except I batted it down like a dude, <laughs> but I would have. Cr- I mean, it was there. <laughs> yeah, sure. ten years from now, I, yeah. I would have just been. I wouldn't be able to uh-huh. handle it. But I'm still forty four is an age where you can keep your emotions in check. Right. And so I'm like holding them back down. But I was like, I felt it hard. And right when I came out of the tunnel, and then because uh, you really can't admit, you're like, I don't. You just feel like, oh, I probably know everybody here. You always just, you just always feel like that. And then I turned, and when I was going down the path, it's like it was just such a blur. And, like, everybody, I was, like, giving high fives, and uh, you just couldn't. I mean, I just couldn't even see in front of me. Like, it was uh, – and then and then you go on stage, and then it's, like, taking it in. Uh, you know, then you're like, all right, well, we got to do a show. And then, you know, we do the show. I mean, it was – 
for doing it in this big of a place, you know, we we're gonna do in some other arenas and stuff. Uh, arenas are very, they are very fun. I thought it felt great. I know you're watching on a screen and stuff like that sometimes, and uh, but that make, but I, I do really honestly think it's about being together and like totally. that's it, that's what makes it. Um, that's why you go see live stuff, and you know, like in comedy clubs, obviously you're super close or whatever. But as the places get bigger, I mean. You want the experience to be as good as it can be, but like that's why the round was so good. And I mean, those you, you can see those screens, and you're just around a lot of people. And like that's it's a big event, it's a big mm -hmm. thing. And uh, people, I felt, I, I mean, I loved it. I felt the enjoyment of. I got to do a bunch of like, because when I'm at home, I get a, you know, I have a lot of all my jokes or a lot of them are involved somewhere in Nashville. And so like, but when you're at home, you get a name, like you get to name the actual place and you know, people, and it felt like people knew it. Like, yep. you yeah, know, yeah. it was, uh, I know a lot of people traveled to this show to watch all of us that listen to this podcast and that means the world. And we welcome you to be a part of us in Nashville. And, uh, but it was nice to be like, wow, there's a lot of, you could hear people getting the references. Brian asked up top how many Nashville natives there are. And it was a, I mean, a big pop. So there's a lot of just yeah. hometown because that's there. that's that's starting to become not much of a thing, and so that was that that made it uh, that made it even just more sweet. And then when we got everybody to hold the when I got everybody to hold the lights out, so I had uh, uh, which we're gonna post a video of it, uh, and you would see it. But like, so I so all this started with so when I was when I started comedy. Uh, I was in Chicago, uh, took comedy classes, uh, Jim Roth, he was there. And uh, when I would drive to the open mics, I would always listen to Back Where I Come From. Go ahead. So the guy that taught your comedy class yeah. was at this show? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That's really cool. And then, uh, uh, so uh, I would listen to Back Where I Come From, I was driving to the open mics whatever because i was in chicago and i was like i'm an old tennessean and it was just such a it was like a song that was from home yeah and uh so and then even in new york when i was with my you know dustin chafin who's been here and all the new york guys it's like i would always listen to it i would listen to it for all before a ton of shows just because it was like almost like a because i love home i love home yeah and uh and so but when I would stand out there when I was handing out flyers and it was two degrees and you would just kind of catch yourself daydreaming. The only the daydream I would have would be to play Bridgestone and then play that song at the end. And it was such a far off dream that it wasn't even ever. I would say I wouldn't say that I ever didn't think I could not do it. Like, but it was it was I the dream was so far that it's you. I didn't know how I would be able to do it. So it didn't really, like it never, I never thought like, well, that's what I'm trying to get to. And you just, you, the, you, the dream so far away that as over this 20 years, as it got closer and closer, you start going like, you're like, oh, like I'm, I might be able to, mm -hmm. this thing might be happening, which is a very weird feeling to have too, because it's something that's about to get finished. Like that dream is so far that I would never even you just would think it's a dream to be like, oh, that's I'm about to be done with that. Uh, and so and I even was like, I don't know if I'm going to do it because then I'm nervous about doing it because I, I don't ever want to. It's, it's like I'm posting the pictures, but I, I, you know, you don't want to come off like I, I, I like it's like, look what I did or right. like I, I don't like that. You know, it it's, never felt that way. Yeah. Well, that's what makes you nervous about doing it. So, I mean, I almost wasn't going to do it, but then it was like, then I just, it's, uh, I did also think about the 24-year-old me that's like dream, and you're like, you can't be in this situation and not do it, you know, and not oh, yeah. do this. I mean, that was the whole point, like. <laughs> also, what an accomplishment to do, just record a special and then do the biggest show that you, I don't know, I imagine this yeah. is the biggest show you've done. Oh, yeah. Uh, with new material. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, yeah, it's insane. That's, yeah, it's unbelievable. It's yeah, everything was leading up to the because that's what. So when we yeah when I did the so when we played the song and everybody everybody held their lights up and so everybody was very polite for you know to go along with me on that. Uh, I mean, everybody put the lights up. Bates has got a great video, just seeing all the lights mm -hmm. pop up, and then we played that song, and uh, 
you know, people singing it and it was insane. And it's the largest crowd. I mean, it's, it's truly the dream. It's, it's better than it, I could have dreamed it. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't think I was going to be the biggest show ever. I didn't yeah, think yeah. all this kind of stuff like that. Uh, but it's also a weird feeling. Cause I, I was like, well, what am I going to feel like? What is after this? Cause you don't, you know, that's hard. Like you get this crazy dream that you don't, expect to happen it happens and then you're like I, I was worried I was like well what am I gonna like I don't know what I have I don't know what other dream I have a lot of stuff I want to do mm-hmm. but now I can't I'm like well what other like what other dream do I have you need a dream because I I, th- I like talking about or I think about you know goals and dreams I might talk about for and I this is not this is just talking about the show so it's uh, not being funny we'll be funny soon uh uh, but you, I think when you want to do something or if you have a dream or something, like, I think it's good to, like, I always say, I always had goals that were very, they're very uh, kind of goals that you could check off. So at the beginning was like, well, I don't want to bark. I don't want to hand out flyers anymore. So that was your first goal to be like, well, how do I not have to hand these flyers out? So those are the, those are the real realistic goals that you're working out. Mm-hmm. This, Playing in this Bridgestone is like, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just trying to get off this corner of handing flyers out and just how do I just get spots? And then once you do that, then you're like, all right, well, now I want to be able to, I want to get past at all the clubs where all the clubs I can go play there. It's little kind of things. Then some of it's even like, uh, I want to, you know, uh, I want to be able to like stay in a, a little better hotel than, or like, I don't want to, I don't want, you know, I want to bring an opener was a big one where you go like, I want to be able to bring an opener. So how 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 good do I have to get to where I can say, hey, I would like to bring my own opener, and the club's like, okay, because the club wouldn't let you do it for a long time, and so then it's like that's a little goal, and then you so like little goals. I always like having like little, and some of them should be fun. Like it should be, you know, I want to stay in. A, I want to pick the hotel I'm staying at instead of having to choose, get whatever hotel they had. So how do I get? To, you know, that's that's a little reward for me to go, well, I'm going to pick this hotel. Like, you know, now I get this hotel or now I get to – when uh, I when I fly, I don't want to have to do the 6 a.m. flight because it's the cheapest. Like, can I do – what do I have to do to, you know, be able to be like, hey, I'm going to go fly at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. so I don't have to wake up at four, 3 in the morning or four in the morning. It's all these little kind of things that you just, and your things just kind of change. Because those are, are you can accomplish those. Mm -hmm. Those you can go do. This you can't go do. I mean, we did it. But but those are all leading you in this They lead to this. Now, I don't, I'm have I don't think, I'm looking back now and reflecting and realizing that now. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, how this goal can become attainable is the, 150 little goals that I did to then you go, wow, well, now I'm almost, your goals are like, well, your next goal is the, you know, it's Mm -hmm. that dream. So it's not even, you know what I mean? Like, so it's, it just, you out of nowhere, you're like, oh, wow, the next goal is the the thing I thought of 20 years ago. Yeah. So then I was worried. So then afterwards, you're like, well, am I going to be like, do I have no motivation after? Am I going to be like, I was scared to be done with this show. I would tell you, after this, after I taped the special, I've only thought of, I mean, I've thought about all the shows, but it's like, I've, this show was such a mark because I was like, I have to have new material. It's at home. Like, it was such a thing that I was like, how am I going to get a new hour by April? Like, all this stuff. And even before the special came out, when I started touring, I needed the hour before that. And so it was like, everything was like, kind of like, this was such a big thing. And it's going to be such a big thing for a lot, for everybody. And so I just wanted to get done with it. But the good thing is when I got done with this, I felt very like, all right, now I can, now I'm getting back to work. Like, that's what it kind of felt like. I didn't feel like it was like, well, I'm aimless. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of have a fantasy dream. I don't want to say it. Like, but I have like, I kind of have one. Uh, I'm not positive if it's it. I mean, it's, you know. Let's hear it. Huh? You don't want to say it? No, I don't. I don't know. You gotta start a band like Kevin Costner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens. You get too big, and then you're like, "Well, I gotta get into a new art form. Mm-hmm. Be a painter. Yeah, like President Bush. Oh yeah, 
No, I want to, yeah. Well, it involves Dateland and the Dateland world that we're Titans like. Are, it's Titans like, are building a new stadium. You yeah. Do a dome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, playing Titan Stadium, I did think that. I thought, you know, they get the new dome, like you could do something like that. Uh, I mean, I want, I, did, I want to, I mean, I want, I would like, I want to play Madison Square Garden. I want to, we're doing Red Rocks. I want to do, I want to do all the touring stuff, but it was, the dream has to be, like, it has to be, uh, I don't know if you get to choose it. Like, I don't think I got to choose this. This just, like, popped in my head because I listened to that song. And, like, you know, like, you daydream. Like, I'm not going, like, the little goals, I'm choosing. Mm -hmm. But I don't think you get to choose the – I think it just kind of has got to be there. Like, you have to have – you have to think about it and be like, can you imagine if it was – that? and you're kind of telling yourself that. Well, you choose to a degree, right? But if nobody likes what you're doing, then you don't get to do any of them. Yeah, you choose you you choose the dream, but I mean, I'm I'm saying like uh, it's your farthest dream. It's got to be your f the farthest one. It's got to be the one you're embarrassed to say to people because yeah. they're going to go, well, how would you even do that? And you wouldn't have an answer to know how you do that. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it's that's why you don't say it because you're like kind of like embarrassed to say it. Because it sounds stupid. When because when you're thinking about it, it sounds stupid. And when you and when you think about it, it's so far off that you're like, well, I know I can't get this, or I don't know when I can't get this. But it's you know it's going to come when it comes. And I, it's not like you're even working towards this goal, this dream. Because I mean, it's just so far off that you don't let yourself like almost tie to it too much. Yeah. And then that's why you put all the like. That's why when I look back, I was glad to, you put all the little. The little stuff. Yeah. Because you also are preparing yourself to go, like, well, I'm, what if this doesn't happen? So then, you know, because you can talk yourself into go, well, if it doesn't happen, I'm, I've still got, I feel happy where I got. So I have little <clears> stuff <throat> that, like, I think it's got to be a dream that that's, I'm figuring this out as I'm talking. Because it actually makes, now it makes sense. It's got to be a dream that you can talk yourself out of being okay not to get. That's the dream that has to be. Because that dream is your deep 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 like you want to do it yeah but you think it's so impossible that you also are going like hey but it, you don't have to do this mm -hmm. and you still would be very happy and like you know and like that's why it's like if you can if you can picture wherever you're doing and whatever you're in life or in your family it could be anything that you want but whatever you want <clears throat> if you can picture some like lunacy dream that you go well if i don't get it i'm going to be completely fine like, and 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 it feels so far off that you're like, well, I don't. That doesn't even make sense. Like that thing, it might not. That thing might, you know, I could have been like, well, Bridgestone might not even be a thing in 20 years. So like, it doesn't matter. Like mm -hmm. all these things that you can make up. That's kind of got to be the, and that's got to be far off. And then you let that just sit. And I don't think you should tell people because it's, it's it's it should be too embarrassing to tell people. It should be like. Who do you think you are? Right. And then you and you and you just let it be there. And you don't know when you're gonna get there. So it doesn't, there's no timetable on it. It's just, you know, end of life. Like it's just open ended. And so like what you gotta let that just be that. And then you go then go get to work and be like, all right, let's start doing the mini goals and achievements that are like i want to do a late night set i want to you know i'm just speaking with comedy it can be whatever right. uh but it's like i want to do a late night set i want to go do uh, i'm gonna go, i'm gonna get up every night beginning i'm gonna do open mics i'm gonna go up every night i'm gonna do what things can you check off and those should be very close those should be very attainable and it's not like you go tell everybody those goals either but they should be you just should be able to you should be able to be just accomplishing goals and so the goal should be easy enough that you you at least learn what it feels like to accomplish a goal. Yeah, you got to have wins. You got to have wins. It's mm -hmm. tough to keep going if you got no wins. If you're at the beginning, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I, it's insane. Yeah. Madison Square Garden is insane. Red Rocks is insane. That's right. this stuff is insane. So it needs to be impossible. And but you, but give yourself wins so you at least feel what it feels like. So you'd like you know that's why like comics like learn how to destroy with a set right. i know you want to think you have to have new material all the time and when you're first starting you need to learn how how to like really murder with a set how to like just get these big laughs because you need to know what that feels like so then it, when you go up 
you know what you're trying to search to. If you don't know what it feels like, then you're it, it could all feel <clears throat> bad, and then you're like kind of whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you try new material all the time and you and you're bombing all the time, you're never you're never gonna feel good enough about comedy to mm-hmm. keep going. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's what people do, though. Or, or, or they'll, or they'll come out with a set that's not good, and they just keep doing it, and they don't change it, and they keep bombing it. Yeah, yeah, you gotta have wins. I always say that you gotta have them. Well, when you when you get <clears throat> married, then you have a family you're thinking about to support. Then you have a daughter, you want to make sure you just doing well enough to take care of her. Yeah, you have all these goals along the way. Yeah, yeah. And then with term life insurance from Fabric by Gerber <laughs> yeah. Life. <laughs> You can help protect your family so their future is secure no matter what happens. Fabric was designed by parents, for parents, to help you get a high-quality, surprisingly affordable term life insurance policy in less than 10 minutes. It takes less than 10 minutes to apply, see your quote, and then personalize your quote to fit your family's needs. You could be offered coverage instantly with no health exam required. I always mention I like that. Fabric has partnered with Gerber Life. Trusted by millions of families for over 50 years, they over, have over 1,600 five-star reviews on Trustpilot.com. Protect your family today with Fabric by Gerber Life. Apply today in just 10 minutes at meetfabric.com slash Nate. That's meetfabric.com slash Nate. M-E-E-T fabric.com slash Nate. Policies issued by Western Southern Life Assurance Company. Not available in certain states. Prices subject to underwriting and health questions. There you All, go. Right. All right. I think you did good. You let us at least get the big. We got it. You didn't. You know, that was, was a good. good place to wrap up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're behind on these ads, so I'm going to be squeezing them in the rest of the show. One of your best yeah. transitions of all time, though. Yeah, very yeah. good. I think you. No, yeah, it was. Uh, well, congrats, Nate. It was awesome yeah. to be a part. Well, yeah, it you. was very fun to be a part. And also, I want to say, I thought it was. So great that your dad got to be on the show. Oh, yeah. I mean, I bombed in front of my dad before doing comedy, <laughs> and uh, that could put a strain on the whole thing. I think mm-hmm. my dad was ready for me to just quit comedy after he yeah. saw me bomb. And yeah. uh, so it's very yeah. fun. Well, he when he goes up, I mean, he's he, uh, he's obviously – so he's been doing this for 50 years. Like, he's so good, and he's so – and he, I mean, he just destroys, and he's so funny, and it was perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. And uh, – it was everybody was, and the whole night was perfect, and uh, that's the audience letting that happen. And like I, I, I said on stage, like I mean, everybody that comes to this stuff, everybody that listens to this podcast, everybody watches the specials that uh, we were making and doing, and uh, you know, I could never pay you back for this kind of for supporting this, but I can hopefully just give you, you know, if it's Nate Land is behind it, then it's you know. You should be able to watch with everybody, which we are doing shows at uh, at Zany's. The next the next little phase of this is it's called the Showcase. We're shooting it uh, April 24, 25, 26 mm-hmm. coming up, and uh, and I'm going to host the twenty fourth. So, so so these three guys are hosting the show, and we're having like six comics or something on each night or something mm-hmm. some something around that, mm-hmm. and they're all doing short sets, and they're all going to be uh, clean sets, and this will this will be the this is an exact thing of that we are doing where it's uh you know it's like not saying all these comics are clean outside of this kind of thing but if nate land is the nate land label is on it i want it to be a you know the tv clean the stuff that you're grew up watching and uh so 24 25 and 6 uh so each everybody's hosting one night Mm -hmm. uh you Mm -hmm. could come to every show if you want to uh and uh we're gonna have uh i'm gonna direct it uh this will be another one I'll direct. Uh, Genovations, who's doing ours, they're Whoa. shooting it all. Uh, it's going to be. We're going to put it on. Uh, I think put it on a podcast as well and YouTube and uh, Vecchione special. I mean, it's way up there. Views six hundred something thousand over views, and everybody's loved it. Uh, Greg Warren's comes out this week, mm-hmm. April twenty first. Twenty first. Twenty first. So his comes out. Uh, so you know this world is being built. <clears throat> Last and, night you hit hundred thousand subscribers. Oh, on oh right. wow, yeah, yeah look at awesome. that. That's awesome, big time. That's crazy. Well, this is the next step, Nate. You've done all these things, and now you're helping other. Not to be corny, but now you're helping other people do the same thing. Yeah. Well, it's. I mean, it's it's the goal. That's the thing. I mean, you know, feel like that's the pact we all sign. Yeah. When we sign up, you're right. like, if right. one of us makes it, we should all make it, or all somewhat, you know. And 
I think everybody would have done it for me. And then I want I, 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 this audience. I mean, you go look at at that Bridgestone, and I'm looking at these places we're going. I mean, there's just these people. You know, it's Christians, non Christians. It's you know Republicans, Democrats. It's mm-hmm. all they just. I mean, just have fun. Just be a show. And uh, you're seeing the audience is massive. That's crazy. Yeah, it was awesome. I'd like to give a shout out to Brian Bates, though. I mean, to Cold Open, uh, nineteen thousand plus, uh, and it was great. He I did mean, good. it's yeah. like you really walk good. out. There's no host. There's no nobody even bringing to, to the stage. I don't think. No, you they just did. did they? Yeah, yeah. Travis announced it. Oh, okay, yeah. but I mean, you come right out there, mm-hmm. and I was like, it was great. And it my voice great. for most of the day was really struggling. Yeah, there was a time I was like, I don't even know if I can do this. And I thought Dusty was going to give me some words of wisdom. He said, you know, someone said there's not enough people to really even matter. But And then he said, but tonight there's 20,000 well, people, so it will matter. Yeah. Some, <laughs> someone told me, and they were talking about shows, and they were like, they were saying like, uh, it'd be like a show that's half full. And they'd go, well, there's not enough people here to ruin your career. Yeah. And I'm mm. like, tonight there is. <laughs> yeah. Tonight there is. So yeah. Yeah, that's suck fine. it up. You know what I mean? Dusty brought me some some herbal tea, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to know what's in this. Yeah. It's concerning to know what Dusty put yeah, in there. Yeah, I hooked it up, and you you had a great show. So yeah, yeah, it worked. I it still worked. don't want to know what's in there. Yeah, you'll find out in a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> I thought I'd find out on stage. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that to you. So read uh, some of you guys' comments. Uh, this is from the Bible and recycling comments. Uh, Nolan <coughs> F- Foley, Foley, Nolan Foley. I have trouble with that one. Nolan Foley. Yeah, you really, uh, yeah. I, Took some I, time with that F. Nolan Foley. I think I'm, I, I can handle Nolan, and I'm very surprised by the Foley. You don't see it coming up? I don't see it. A few it letters coming. from now? I would have. <laughs> it's almost like it wants to rhyme. Nolan Foley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. And, then it, and then it trips no, you up at the end. That's interesting. No Foley. No, no Foley. No yeah. Foley. Yeah, I would, I would have to go. I'd call him one. And I like the name Nolan. And I like the last name Foley. Just not together. Nolan Foley. Yeah, I, I, I think yeah, a lot of people are fine with it. I would have trouble. I it just, I would call them just one. Mm-hmm. The Foley's. We need more double topic episodes. The flow back and forth between the Bible and recycling is fantastic. There we go, Nolan. Yeah. I, I don't think that was the plan going in, but it, it was fun how we weaved in and out. Yeah, yeah it was good. Paul Antonio, if this podcast is an indicator of how well the average American knows the Bible, no wonder this country is in the mess it's in. Well, I can't disagree with you there, Paul. I'll yeah. tell you that. Well, I do disagree. Uh, I feel like I know the Bible pretty well. Well, well, I'm, I mean the podcast itself. I feel like I know the Bible pretty well too. Yeah. But we, the for for the topic being the Bible, we barely dug into it. I did. I I uh, dumped out. Pretty quick. Yeah, you jump jump shit. I did pretty fast. Too much. I, I felt like I'd kill the momentum of the of the show, and so I kind of moved on to recycling a little too fast. Yeah, but well, yeah. So I, I agree thought, with Paul. But I, I thought it was great. Yeah, it was. You know, you can. Uh, there's plenty of stuff of uh, podcasts about the Bible. <laughs> Yeah. So there's a there's a balance that you're trying to have of just yeah yeah this is not the Bible yeah, podcast yeah. but I just agree with that statement yeah yeah no that's right that particular episode right. yeah if you if you like click on you go oh this is about the Bible and two seconds in we're like well, what about recycling <laughs> yeah <laughs> the subject's the Bible and recycling yeah I mean yeah. we talked about the Bible yeah some, we, but we would go but back I, and forth but yeah. I admit that yeah I kind of bailed on it yeah. Uh, we had a nice little Bible talk in uh, Johnson City. Yeah, yeah we did. <laughs> I mean, I'm always down for it. Yeah. Dusty and I have plenty off off mic. Yeah. Yeah. Ross Andre, on the subject of recycling, I run one of the largest food waste recycling facilities. We take food waste and compost it into organic fertilizer for our, our row crops. We can boast We can boast that even with all the material that comes in, only about 3% can be utilized or reused. Cannot. Cannot be u- utilized or reused. So some recyclers are actually making a difference. All right, that makes me feel a lot better. That's mm-hmm. good. But food recycling, though, right? This is not plastic or glass or... Yeah, but at least that's, like, nice to be, like, oh, this dude, like, this is, like, 97% is being reused. Yeah. So you're, like, that dude is doing it, but that's with food. Food waste recycling facilities. 
So well, I'm good for Ross though. Yeah. Who re- yeah. how do you recycle food? Just compost Eat it. Eat it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, but who who do, do restaurants like Oh, I recycle? don't know. I think you how yeah. does that food get there? What does compost mean? Well, I just put it in a box with other dirt and other clippings. And I'm learning, still learning compost, but then you cover it and then it traps in heat and the heat and the worms break it all down to usable soil. Oh. Oh. Hmm. And you just leave it in a box. And then you take that, yeah, once you, then you could take that out and use it to plant, you know, yeah, plant stuff in. So you're making your own soil. Yeah. But with only like food scraps. Yeah, or a card. You can do cardboard. There's a few other things you can break down like that. I'm not an expert on it. I'm learning it. Mm-hmm. But the soil gets deep. I so mean, when you're it, done with your food at night, y'all just dump it in a bucket or a, a box. Yeah, I got a little thing out behind the house. I just take it, and throw it in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my wife's not as into it as me. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm, and you have raccoons that come around a lot. Yeah, I get some raccoons, <laughs> and some possums. And, yeah. yeah. I trapped a raccoon. I wonder what the raccoon situation is at his lar- his food waste recycling <laughs> facility. I mean, I wonder if you got to have it like a pri- it's got to be like a lockdown, like a prison. Mm-hmm. Yeah, electric just fence. To, and- I mean, just I mean, animals are just like you know all over. Shane Hightower, Brian's reaction to Dusty when he brought up other books than the King James version being watered down is the same reaction people have when they realize that. They were talking to someone who has done more homework than him and wanted out of the conversation as quickly as possible. All right. Well, it wasn't that. It was Come just that shame. Dusty's answer was so dumb, I didn't even know how to re- <laughs> reply to it. He was trying to, you're trying to get out of it to save Dusty. Yeah. No. no. I've heard Dusty's argue many times that he's a King James Version guy. I grew up on a King James Version, but yeah. it's not the best translation. There's a couple I like, but I do like King James the best. Mm-hmm. Mm. He likes dragons. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, just, I don't like the NIV. That's the one that I like to stay away from. The yeah. one most of the world uses? Yeah, it's yeah. tough. And too. that's why we're in a tough spot. Yeah. We go back to Paul Antonio up there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a new American standard guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I read the uh, Bible for Dummies. Uh, is that version good? <laughs> I think there is one. I think that's there the message. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the message. I think that's what that Bible is. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Craig watching four guys ask. Daniel the, Craig. Yeah. All right. The Daniel Craig watching four guys ask the question: Why would anyone need to buy ladybugs when their friend Mike just did a special explaining them why? And one of those guys directed the special. Love the podcast. Thanks for staying on brand. Oh yeah. <laughs> Do you have a bit about that? He I did. think so. I didn't watch much of his show. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he has a very funny joke about be- he has bed bugs. Bed bugs. Uh-huh. So he bought some ladybugs and unleashed them. So oh, okay. Yeah. They, yeah. they wear them down mentally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is very funny. Yeah, I do know that. I, I mean, I dealt with Mike with all his bed bugs. Mm. He was he was going through it, dude. I mean, he would show up just at the comedy club that night and be like, mm. just no sleep. Yeah, dude. It's your whole it's your whole life when you have it. He moved. I mean, we've talked about it for years. I mean, it was like such a big thing when he got them because he just got them and then <laughs> he just couldn't. It's like it only would happen to Mike to get bed bugs and they just like would not go away. And then he just changes his whole life. Did he get bit? Were bites showing up on him? And stuff? Uh, yeah. And then, I mean, just getting, like, and they couldn't get rid of him. And then he still, when he goes to hotels, he puts his suitcase in the bathtub. And, I mean, he's, you know, he wraps his stuff in platinum. He's a, you know, he's a different person. He's like, he's like someone that went off to war. <laughs> PTSD. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Hawkins. When I was young and I'd be at the grocery store with my mom, she always has a, had a joke she would say. When the person checking us out would ask, paper or plastic, she'd always say, it doesn't matter. I'm bisexual. Back then, I thought it was hilarious. Now, probably not so good. Well, I'm glad you made me read it. Uh, <laughs> I love it. No, I think that's, that's a great fun. joke. I think so, yeah, that's too. a fun. Uh, that's a fun joke. That's a fun mom. You don't yeah. like it? I just, uh, it, It's all right. It's just who calls it a sack? It's a bag, right? It's a paper or plastic bag. We call it a, a sack. sack. Yeah, but that's, uh, the joke doesn't work. I know. Well, you're forcing it then. But paper yeah, sack. Yeah, but I mean, you're doing a joke in a 
It's a fun, I mean, for that person, it's a fun grocery <laughs> line joke. But someone to sack, I'm just sack your to, groceries? I'm just playing yeah. devil's advocate here. You yeah, know? you got a, like a feed sack uh, and a brown paper sack. Yeah, I think we call it a sack. Sack lunch. A sack you lunch. You called it a sack? If it was paper. Yeah. Are you serious? Did dude? you ever take a sack lunch? No. I think it's... Oh, a sack lunch. Yeah, yeah. In, in a, okay, in a brown yeah. paper bag. Yeah. But you never go, hey, do you have any plastic sacks? No, <laughs> never our, do our, our, <laughs> Plastic, we say bag. Yeah. Paper, I'd say sack. You'd say sack for, at a grocery store? Yeah. I'd say bag, paper bag. <laughs> Plastic yeah. sack. That's Somebody bags your groceries. They don't yeah. sack your groceries. I'd like them to sack it. Yeah. yeah. I wish they'd sack my groceries. They, yeah. I agree with Aaron <laughs> on the bag thing, but I think the joke is good. Yeah. The, the joke's fine. The joke. I, would, I would laugh if somebody yeah. said that. I'm going to ask. Well, you just, just heard it and you did sack them. Well, I, yeah. this is a much different context. Yeah. You know? It's the way he delivered it. Well, you would be... This guy does no comedy. Right? <laughs> uh, you would be... Yeah, you'd be at the end of the thing going... <laughs> you go, Behind him in line. You go, do you want me to hand you the sack then? <laughs> yeah, this guy. It's unbelievable. Mm. I'll take... Can I some of those Mentos fruits? Uh, Ryan Coyle. Cole. Coyle. I work in the aerospace industry, and at a recent conference, <laughs> that's all just one sentence, right? And I, I'm not really, I was, I've been trying to slow down because I got, I was getting quick, and then my brain was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I work in the aeros, aerospace. <laughs> I work in, if you said aerospace, you think you could work in that space? Aero? Yeah, sure. But is that what it said? Is that how you say it? Aerospace, yeah. Aerospace. Yeah. Oh. I thought I said it kind of different. Yeah, I think you said I, you were starting to say aerospace. Aerospace, yeah. the aerospace. I work in the aerospace. <laughs> That's different though, right? If you really sound it out like it's A R R O W aero, yeah. Like I work at the aerospace. Yeah, I think I would say that, and they're yeah. like, "Oh, like Jander," and I go, "Yeah, yeah,", yeah. <laughs> and they go, "Oh, okay, okay." Right. Yeah, I work in the aerospace industry, and at a recent. Conference, a presenter said that a good rule of thumb to determine how much it costs to launch anything into space is to use the price of the same weight of solid gold, meaning that using the current price of 29,747 per pound for gold times the 268 million tons of trash per year in just the United States, it would cost 15 quadrillion 944 trillion. And seven hundred million each year to shoot just the United States trash to space. Wow! If you just want to say space isn't real, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. but that's where you could be like, well, everybody's got to do it for free. Yeah, <laughs> right. We're making the money up. Yeah, but you still need <clears throat> physical resources to build these rockets. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and those have to somebody has to get those. Here's an idea, but what someone's we, making the but like we're the yeah. Let's just float it with helium. Mm. Mm. Well, he there's just, a helium. He just cut it down. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it might be forty bucks to yeah. me, like to throw this trash. Yeah, up go there. to Party City yeah. real quick. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's super quick. Mm. Bestie, what's, tell me about what's going on Sunday. Oh, I'll tell you what. I love when the weather starts to warm up. Getting out in my yard and digging in the garden, it's one of my favorite parts of spring. And Sunday lawn care makes it easier than ever to enjoy. Sunday, I do love this, by the way. I love to get out in the yard. I've been out there today already. Mm. Sunday is everything you need to get the lawn you've dreamed of. This spring, go to getsunday.com slash Nate and enter your address to get a customized plan created just for your lawn. No trips to the store or hauling heavy bags or sacks, since they ship straight to your home. You just need to buy, you just, oh, you just need a hose to apply Sunday. You can fertilize your whole lawn in less time than it takes to watch an episode of your favorite TV show. And they only use ingredients you can feel good about. No harsh chemicals, no long waiting periods, or trying to keep your kids and pets off the lawn. Simply apply, let it dry, and you're back to enjoying your yard. Sunday is easy and affordable. Some lawn care services cost more than fifteen hundred a year. Mm, Can you believe that? Crazy. Mm. But Sunday's full season plans start at just a hundred and nine dollars. Wow. That's a lot of money difference. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's crazy. Fifteen dollars a year is what 
1500 a year. I mean, that's like launching your trash into space versus yeah. floating it with helium. Yeah. <laughs> that's the difference. Yes. Yes, it is. And Sunday is offering our listeners 20% off. Full season plans start at just $109, and you can get 20% off when you visit getsunday.com slash Nate at checkout. So even less than 109 mm. That's 20% off your custom plan at getsunday.com slash Nate. Awesome. Wow. Boom. Uh, so the Nashville comments. Tom Scontras. Wow. Scontras. Okay. That's Here's what I wrote down for places to go in Nashville. The Pizza Hut, <laughs> the Hard Rock Cafe, McDonald's, the Food Court, or any of any one of the seven dollar stores on the road to Dusty's place. <laughs> That's about right. We really nailed that, that episode. Is right. Yeah, good places to go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Neil Rubenstein. Nate brings up old Chicago, and Aaron says he's never heard of it. Meanwhile, just a few months ago. We went there together in Wichita. <laughs> Glad I left such a strong impression. <laughs> Ooh, that is uh, true. I completely forgot about that. Neil <laughs> Rubenstein is a very funny comic who uh, I worked with in Wichita, and we went there after a show. Wow! I didn't realize it was an old Dude. Chicago. Yeah. Wow. And wow. how great was it? It was good. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. solid. My bad. I'm sorry, man. Well, sorry, so Neil. It's good as that pizza place we went to in Illinois that time. You remember that? That guy said it's the best place in. Uh... And then he made fun of me about the pizza I was eating. You remember that? Yes. The guy owned an Italian restaurant, and then we left and went to it. He's like, you got <laughs> to check out this pizza place. Yeah. Be- best pizza place in town, he said. Not his place. Yeah. Uh, that's... And his place is shut down now. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, he didn't have that dream, you know? Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Right. His, his fantasy dream was just to get other people to go to that other restaurant. Yeah. Old Chicago commented. Oh, oh yeah. Do they really? Yeah, they yeah, say, yeah, 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 yeah. What'd they say? They said, thank Nate. They said, yeah. come on in. Get Whoa. to it. Oh. Yeah, they apparently don't care if you spend some money there. And uh, yeah, I mean, I ate Old Chicago that night. Uh, ordered it right here, in real time. Yep. Uh, Andrew Kahn, it's amazing to me that Nate is skeptical of every study from a major university that Balderdash brings up about any topic. But the moment it's brought up about how McDonald's chooses when to serve or not to serve breakfast, he says, I'd like to see that study. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I, I'd like to be involved in it, mm-hmm. you know? But you don't want it to be conducted by a university. Technical no. school, yeah. maybe. <clears throat> Community college. Vol Community State College. college. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of studies are not done by people that are actually using the product. Yeah. That's what I think. I think a lot of rules are made but like that. I think a lot of stuff is made not by people – that are being asked to use the thing. People so you are, want McDonald's customers to put together this yeah, study? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what they should do. I mean, okay. like, you know, do a Twitter poll or and like, uh, you know, like do something that I, I like, we've done that with our polls. We were asking the listeners at the beginning what to do and mm-hmm. now I overwrote some of them. Mm-hmm. But we asked, you asked the people that are using the product. Right. They go like, well, I should listen to you. In the beginning, you asked people what to do on the podcast? Yeah. What were much. some of the things you overrode? The beginning, we were a mess, so we didn't even... We were, we were like, asking, should we dance? Like, we had no <laughs> idea. What did we ask? Yeah, we were really asking. Like, hello, folks, and let's go, folks. Yeah, some of the, like, how does... One of them was like, what should we call people who listen to the podcast? Yeah. It came down to Nate Landers and folks. Mm-hmm. I thought Nate Landers immediately, but folks is much better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> folks is much better. Yeah. And then so like, the, yeah, a lot of that stuff. And then it was like, hello, folks. Let's go, folks. Like, uh, just a bunch of, st- you know. And so it was like, we would, uh, but I think that, yeah, that's what it means. I, I think most every, st- I, I, board on every study is going to be not but, done by but someone. But do that you need it. a study for this or does McDonald's just have, I mean, so much data about what's being bought and when it's being bought and then they know the cost of everything. They determine well, it's make, not yeah. worth it. So McDonald's did it. Yeah, right. McDonald's. I'm saying I still would like to see the study. I still think you could ask. You want to see the numbers? Yeah. Okay. Look, I would McDonald's. I would get. They're going. They're studying it to be like this. Just doesn't make sense. So I understand that. I, yeah. I, there could be stuff that I think could be done a different way. But in general, all studies. That's why I question all studies of other places. Okay. Because I don't think they're done by people that are using any of these products that mm-hmm. are going out and having a regular life. That's what entertainment is entertainment is not you're not being entertained by people that are going out and having you know 
with with the audience in mind. They're looking down on McDonald's. Yeah. They yeah. It's a when McDonald's Adam Sandler when Adam Sandler talk about McDonald's and whatever Adam Sandler feels like a guy that like has been, will go to McDonald's. Sure. Like it's like you can. There's some people that when he because he made the in uh, the movie when he was like you know I thought it was ten thirty. It's a, you know eleven. Like yeah, Big Daddy, Big yep. Daddy, and like but you're like why well, believe that? I believe in Adam Sandler is the most successful person on earth. But it's like you believe that he's like a normal dude. Like you know, some people you don't believe in. The What's world. shocking to me is that McDonald's is not a sponsor of this podcast. We're they sent me it. yeah. They sent me the is they when they sent me Happy Meal stuff. But they did. It was funny. The thing. It was very nice. They go. Felt like this was a long time coming. <laughs> oh, they said that. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. That hoodie That's you cool. wore last week. A lot of people come and it looked like a Soviet Union. It thing. does. Yeah. Yeah. They thought it was the sickle and you yeah. put full axes of evil. Well, I stand with who I stand with, <laughs> and yeah, we're in. There's a war going on. Yeah. <laughs> and it's complicated I chose, guys. And I chose my side. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's Nate's shirt. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically what a war. Yeah. I stay with the Soviet. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, I wonder if I can say the joke. I, I, I did say, uh, uh, we'll see if this is, if I, it's just a joke. I said, when I was at the Grammys, did I tell this joke here? They had uh, Zelensky talk at the Grammys. This was a couple years ago. Yeah. So Zelensky comes out and gives his speech to while the war and stuff. And the Grammy, I told Laura, once he got done, I was like, all right, I'd like to hear Putin's side as well now. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I was like, it would be funny if they just did. They go, all right, that's his side, everybody. We're going to, here's Putin. He's going to tell you what he thinks, and then you get to decide. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Said that quietly to Laura. Uh, Gabriel de Jesus. Gabriel de oh. Jesus, or Jesus. I was shocked to find out that in 2010, Ronnie Lee Gardner was given st steak, lobster, apple pie, and vanilla ice cream, all while watching the Lord of the Rings trilogy and then executed by Firing Squad. Who knew we were still using the Firing Squads to execute death row inmates in 2010? Turns out it is still legal in several states, and some states are talking about bringing it back. Uh, they, I like it. Yeah, the kid that, uh, or the dude that killed those girls in Utah or whatever, or not maybe not Utah, but somewhere. The I just read they were he might be a firing squad. Wow. The guy that's like that went it. in that apartment and you know Yeah, and I think the Lord of the Rings that trilogy, ecology. that's too much. You give him you give him a third of one movie while he eats his meal. You don't get the whole trilogy. Oh, you can't just watch one though. Those, you don't are, get those nine, are good films. You don't get oh, nine hours of movies when you're <laughs> so on Idaho? death row. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's uh uh that bad news bait. He knows the state where that's at. Uh <laughs> Uh, he, uh, yeah, but I mean, you know, you just they they time it up to be like, well, this is gonna be in four days, so like, all right, you can, you know. Now, someone commented that, and I'm sorry I couldn't find their comment later to credit their name, but when we were talking about Last Mills, that on the pilot episode of Raising Hope, which I didn't watch because I'm not a Greg Garcia fan, but the per well, that's a joke, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> the uh, woman on death row. Her last meal was she asked for a shamrock shake and a McRib, knowing that they're never oh, uh, that's out at the same time. So yeah, it yeah. delayed her execution for like five um, months. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Greg. Yeah. Greg's quite talented. Yeah. Um, Can you guess the states where firing squad is still legal? Mm, uh, uh, one's obvious, I think. Texas. Oh, actually, no, not that obvious then. Oh. Not. <laughs> Texas is not one? No, that would have been the most obvious one. Idaho. <laughs> no. I thought they just said they were doing that. Where uh, Tennessee. No. I, this is <laughs> a, a bad idea. Utah, Oklahoma, Mississippi. Yeah. That's the one I thought would be obvious. Yeah. South Carolina. Okay. South Carolina ran out of lethal injection drugs. They had to bring back the firing squad. Mm -hmm. So, hope they get that sorted out. Yeah, what do they do with firing squads? Like, not everybody has a bullet. I think that's what they do. Not everybody has a bullet. You don't know who oh. killed the person. So those people don't know. Oh, wow. So some, some people. I didn't you know, know that. <clears throat> Hopefully the person that has the bullet's a good shot. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I wounded him. He goes, ding. He just hits the wall behind him. I guess we know who had the bullet. <laughs> Guy's kind of off. Mm. 
uh, yeah, they stand. What have they been staying in a circle? You watch John Wick when they do that one. They they stand in that circle, and you're like, well, y'all better hit this person. Yeah, yeah. Because hit each other. You're gonna hit each other. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Yeah. Fire squad. All right. <laughs> Uh, Took a turn, sorry. Yeah, uh, Mickey Rainey, Mickey Rainey. I was disappointed to see the, that Nate's golf tournament didn't have a four hole one. Didn't have a four hole one club challenge. I would be on, in on that. I hope it went well. From Laura, she loves this idea. <laughs> that would be a good idea. Maybe we will do that next year for my DCA golf tournament. Uh, four four entire holes. You only use one club. You, yeah, my joke. So I'm a stand-up comedian, oh, and uh, right. I had a joke about uh, uh, a driver playing a – I don't know if I would do four holes because I enjoy it, but it, I think it would be great to have a hole be like you can only use your driver on this yeah, hole. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. And, uh, it's a par three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just see what everybody gets. That would be actually be – no handicaps, no mulligans on that hole. Yeah. Everybody's just got to use the driver. Uh Joe Manick. Hello, folks. The Animal Bracket is so on par for the Nate Land Podcast, and I am here for it. I got money on Hay Bear. Can't wait to hear more of the matchup breakdowns next week. Keep up the Lord's work. We, we got to do another round. Oh, can we talk yeah. about Are how we, Do we the... need to do this first? Yeah, tell us about electric e-bikes. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. While we're Aaron's gonna, pulling it up. Yeah, we're going to do this as Aaron pulls it up. Uh there's no better way to get outside and enjoy the spring than with an electric e-bike. Uh, we, uh, yeah, my, uh, we had obviously a lot of people in town. Uh, my wife's family was in town, so uh, they were over staying with us. And uh, they rode around on the electric uh, e-bikes. I mean, it's awesome, dude. It's just so fun. It's so fun to ride around. They have, uh, in Amsterdam, I mean, so many people are using these electric e-bikes. Uh, they have quality feature filled models, finance as low as $73 per month, so it won't cost a fortune to do. Uh, it's You could just drive around, like, I mean, if you're in a city, I mean, it's this is probably going to be the future of what they're going to make mm -hmm. you do. Uh, and so it's going to be, but, <clears throat> but even getting around town like even you know driving over to a neighbor's house you're like oh, i'll just ride your little bike over like it's just a it's just a good time there's over 250,000 riders on the road so far you can reach up to 28 miles per hour with the twist of a throttle on our next level pedal assist uh they cost way less than the competition and are foldable ship free and come fully assembled start your next adventure with electric e-bikes ready set spring sell uh, visit electricebikes.com to learn more and explore the new e Expedition uh, Cargo e-bike and all of the other epic models Electric has to offer. <laughs> That's L-E-C-T-R-I-C-E bikes.com. Right. I'd, like, I'd like to say on the animal bracket, if you don't mind, that uh, we had a little talk about the puffer fish and the piranha. Mm -hmm. and, and as a group, we had gone with the piranha, even though I was for the pufferfish. You weren't happy about it. Yeah. And uh, someone sent a thing on Twitter showing that a pufferfish, uh, I don't know exactly the example, but that the pufferfish would, would beat a lone piranha. Really? Yeah. Because that's an important uh, thing we need to, to stipulate. This is a one-on-one -on -one match. Yeah. Yeah. Of these animals. Mm -hmm. And a piranha, piranha, its strength is in its numbers. Yeah. Right? They attack as a group. Yeah, but they're just nonstop. Why would it beat it? Because it couldn't bite it? Well, the puffer fish would puffs up and it has like little spikes on it. And yeah. then it would just, you know, stab the piranha. Yeah, but it's not. But I mean, you ever like, imagine if you had, imagine me and you get in a fight and then you have spikes on your shoulder and you got to hit me with your shoulder. But the, it's going to be pretty tough. But it but it would be my whole body. Not on your up. face. But I would, I would just, you would come at me and try to bite me, and I would just, my whole body would be puffed up, and I would just get you in the corner. I don't think you'd be able to fight. I get you in there the corner. Is, well, there is no corner in the river. Well, there might be a little, a little, a little crevice. I, I find it hard. I, I mean, it's like if I'll go after your tail. You have no spike on your tail. If I grab your tail and start, but I, you know, I just, I think that. You know, you gotta you gotta give that that the you're thinking that the puffer fish is just playing the defense, but it's got some offense too. Yeah, the offense is what it swims its fat body over and <laughs> tries to go. Its spikes. Mm, mm, tries to swing its spikes at you. Yeah, 
Well, I saw that, and they made some good points. And some people argued chimpanzee would beat a Komodo dragon, but I disagree with. That I think one. we got to whatever we pick. I think we got to stick with it. Oh yeah, yeah. We're obviously not going to be. Well, this is from right. Nick Sabader, who studied biology and ecology at uh, doesn't say where, but. He said the average bite force of a pufferfish is around 62,050 PA. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that unit of measurement is. But the strongest species of piranhas, it's around 12,000. So just going off bite force alone, the pufferfish yeah, I just think we're, dominates the piranhas. I think we're really underrating the pufferfish. The pufferfish is a tough animal. But you weren't even thinking about it biting. No. But- so you just typed in, someone asked, could a pufferfish be the... Uh- does a pufferfish have a stronger bite than a piranha? This question's been asked. We're yeah. thinking about like Jigglypuff yeah. or whatever, but a pufferfish. Are you? Is... Do you ever? Do you pay for core? I don't know, man. That's one that I'm always wondering about. Like, do I want to get? It seems fun. Everything always sends you there, mm-hmm. and it gives you like one answer, and then it's like you got to pay for the rest. Yeah, core seems like a good time. It's like a, a sophisticated Yahoo Answers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, get a yeah. little bit better stuff on here. Yeah, I always like yeah, I always like it's some fun stuff. I I, I think we got to stick with what we go with. I mean, like you can't we're not going to look it up and well, see. Well, I'm not suggesting we change it, but I just want to, you know, We got voted. Case. We got voted prana. I think a prana's they're just like, you know, they they're just going to it's going to be chaos for the puffer fish. Yeah. And right. so the bite force, it's like whatever, you know. It's uh, but that's all the piranha has. Yeah, but it has will, and the pufferfish is <laughs> just <laughs> floating around, just like you know. If it gets scared, it's like boop, puff. But 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 think about this though: <laughs> you know? piranhas used to run it in crowds, so it might be afraid from the beginning. If it's just out there on its own, I think a pr- they're like zombies, dude. Like they mm-hmm. just, it's just a pro. Like they're gonna just come at whatever. Look. Here's what I'll give you. I think the prana wins, but I think it. I I I I'll, I'll, I'll think we're not doing the prana again. I th- I don't. I think the prana will die in the next fight just because yeah. it's like it's yeah. it's been we, poisoned and yeah. it's already weakened. But I, I, a prana to me just feels like it's like it's not going to let you. The pufferfish is going to be like, well, I'm stabbing it. It's not going to work, and he's just going to keep eating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a zombie. A it's a zombie. Right. All right, so what was the, the next matchup? We're going to so the what next. was the top? So we want to say. So just to recap, yeah. we had a piranha, piranha taking the pufferfish. We had a bear beating a gorilla. Yeah. We had a python taking out an alligator. Some people disagreed with that one. And really? And we had a Komodo dragon taking out a chimp. What was the, some of the examples they disagreed with? They had examples of a alligator taking out a uh, a python. Yeah, it's fake news. But. <laughs> There's also examples of Python winning. Yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, I think that's case by yeah. case on that one. Yeah, yeah. So down to the next uh, section of the bracket, we're starting off with the. And they said the chimpanzee could beat a. Some people did, but yeah. some people said no. Komodo dragon would kill it. Yeah. All right. We've got a bald eagle versus an an owl. I think that's a barn owl. Is what a it barn looks like. owl specifically? Yeah. I mean, this one seems. I think owl. This is really like, I think really. Owl. Oh, really? Why? Well, I think owls are brutal, right? I think uh, uh, eagle is mostly a uh, scavenger kind of, you know, just kind of, I think, right? It just kind but of But they have to fight. It's just so much bigger. Those big talons. I think it yeah. is a bald eagle is so big in a way that you don't even realize. We don't see them that often. And an eagle knows it's an eagle. And they swoop down. Yeah, it's got the attitude of an eagle for sure. They Barn swoop owl. down. I think we're underrating the the owl though. I mean, they got they got talons too. They got their head on a swivel. Yeah, they, they, they never yeah. leave a barn, dude. A bald mm-hmm. eagles is out there. Well, where are we fighting? Are we out? Are we in the barn? Or are we out in in? A I, I think lake? in the Roman Colosseum. That's how I'm picturing all okay. these in my head. Yeah. All right, I like that. So they're all in the Roman Colosseum. Yeah, I like that. They're all on, on stage at Bridgestone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I like the Ro- Roman Colosseum. Right. So they're in there. And they're going at it. I I think an eagle is just so much. And eagles are ruthless, dude. Like they're, they are. You know, I mean, they're. But are there any corners in the Roman Colosseum? They go after what do you mean? bald people. I've said that in my act about how crazy eagles are. I I still go for Al, but I'm I'm clearly outvoted. So I'm yeah. So. Brian, you want to weigh in? What do you think? I'm going with the eagle. Yeah, I was with you on pupper fish, but I'm going to go eagle on this. Yeah, I'm going eagle too. Yeah. Next matchup. This is sort of the the misfit toys section. We got a platypus 
versus an anteater. One on one fight. I don't think this fight happens. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, that's what this one, I think it's going to be. We're poking them with a stick. Do something. You put them in there. (laughs) It's going to be a tough one to get going. Uh, Wake up. Yeah. uh, I got to go platypus myself. Really? I mean, I would think anteaters are just so big, it maybe could walk on it. I get accidentally would. I figured you'd say platypus don't exist. Well, it's a weird animal. I've not seen one in real life, but is it a duck bill platypus? Duck bill platypus. They got yeah. a, like a they got a flat tail that I yeah. think he could really whip this. Uh-huh. He could hit with. its head. Yeah, they're mammals, but they lay eggs. Yeah. <laughs> can we see how they? Can we look up? Oh, just a video I know of a platypus. The, no, no. Just like how do what's how do uh, they attack? Like okay. separately. Like, I don't understand why I have to watch a video, like, uh, uh. You got a video of two uh, platypi attacking each other. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, how do They're they. They're great swimmers. Great swimmers. But there's no. Is but there, this fight is not in the in the water. Well, we, I think we have water in the yeah. policy. Oh, right. So, yeah. okay. You got to have. That's you not fair have for land eater. Kind of dual terrain. That, yeah. Well, they enter your. Shallow water. And they got to come in. Now, we're going into this. I think, yeah, it would be tough to make them fight. Uh, this is just a ridiculous looking animal. Oh, he's eating like he really uh, dominated that worm yeah. there. Do an anteater. Uh, well, we saw nothing there. Attack. Yeah, anteater just looks bigger. Yeah, an anteater could be. I'm just. I, I'm trying to even wrap my head around them it just being seems attacking. To not even have a mouth. That's though. not even a good looking. Mm-hmm. These anteaters are crazy looking. They're they're big. The man. back of them almost looks like a peacock. It's the anteater. Look at anteater. that little mouth. It's anteater. It's got claws. Crazy claws. <laughs> Look at that little crazy mouth, claws. <laughs> Look at that thing. Yeah. Look at that tail. Yeah. I think that duckbill platypus would eat that little nose up. No, I think, look. <laughs> look at oh, it. dude, it, I would charge This thing's man. going after yeah, a that dog. that dog's like, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> That's a big part. You got two things that are like. I can't wrap my head around that. I that's can't that's the str- That might be the strangest looking animal I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah, it looks like something a kid draws, and you're like, that's just. You almost it. could argue you don't know which one's front or back. Yeah, but I, I think uh, you're right. Well, it's just such a weird because one needs water, I, I one needs now. land. I so think I look. I think saying Annie, you're so much bigger and has crazy claws, and but does but, it have claws though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to dig. Its whole thing is digging I for ants. It, but I thought it just nose stuck its snout down there. No, they the got to dig hill. the hole, dude. They got to dig the hole. I mean, the, the, you got a platypus is swimming, so it, it has like the flippers. Yeah, look at these giant anteater. Claws, but let's see dude. platypus claws. They don't have claws. They have flippers. <laughs> they're like they're they got to swim. Yeah, mm-hmm. they got a little. Yeah, yeah, they got a nothing. platypus is uh, cute. Yeah, no, an anteater is not cute. It an is anteater cute. is like a it's it's sad, dude. I just think it's on it's a. Where would they even fight though? If they're on land, clearly the anteater. But well, the, water, the, the, I, the the platypus is a mammal. It does need to breathe. Yeah. So, so it, once it comes up, it's over. I wish we could see an uh, anteater swim. That's what I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you. This one's a tough one. We can we can we can allow looking at an anteater swim. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you'll He'll suspend allow the it. rules. Yeah. Let's see an anteater swim. All right. Let me see. If they can swim, they we'll, love it. We'll give it to they them. They love the water. Now it's this is a, it's approaching the water, not very confidently. It's kind of sniffing around, and then it jumps. And in. And then it jumps in, and it's just so it is comfortable in water. Yeah. Uh, well, it's got that big old tail. I mean, it swims. All right, it can swim. I'll give it. I'll give it to the anteater. Yeah. I mean, it's struggling, but I'll give it to it. <laughs> it's not. A, it's not the greatest swimmer. Yeah. It looks like me swimming. Yeah. Out there, yeah. <laughs> Stay close to the wall. It immediately hugged the wall. It yeah. does. <laughs> it gets in, and it definitely looks like someone that would swim with their shirt on. Yeah. Yeah. That's what. Yeah, for sure. Picture someone swimming with their shirt on, and that's what an anteater swims. It almost like. got attacked by that duck. Yeah. 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 It does get in. And he, yeah. It's like, well, how? Like the anteater, right before he gets in, goes, well, how deep is it? Yeah. That's the ass. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and he stays. Oh, near he's the getting side. out now. Oh, yeah, okay. Now he's getting out. Look at him. Yeah. Oh, he's got a baby on he's it. Got a baby that? On oh, his back. It likes the water. It just drowned its baby, but <laughs> it's <laughs> and it could be looking and he have its mouth up like a submarine. Well, what if the platypus were to just squish the nose of the anteater and it couldn't breathe? I, that's the only chance it would Submission. have. Submission. But I mean, the claws are just. 
But I'm thinking it doesn't can't can't reach it because he's he's got the mouth closed yeah. and he's like he's tapping. But they Pla- both got that weird mouth. Platypus has to have a lot going up for him. Has to have a lot right. going. It has for to him. be yeah. Everything has to go perfectly for the platypus. Mm-hmm. Anteater can show up on a bad day, and mm-hmm. uh, and, and take him out. I think. Yeah. I think we're going anteater. Yeah. Now it's heating up. It's getting a little more interesting. Got some heavy hitters here. We got a polar bear versus a tiger. Yeah. I are think- we in the snow? Well, it's are- in the Coliseum. So I think I think I would say as we're making this game up, <laughs> each animal gets their strength in the Coliseum. So if mm-hmm. one can get one to the other thing, that plays into it. Okay. So like you would have snow for the polar think, bear I'm, and the tiger has some right trees and it's like so you could go on intelligence could which one could lure like i think the tiger could lure the polar bear easier than i don't i don't think a polar bear is luring anything i think it's a follower straight up fight i don't think a polar bear wins at all i mean i think a polar bear wins completely I think in a, a straight bear. up fight but the tiger tigers are so like they're smart. Like they just. But polar bears do that too. That's that's why they're white. They camouflage in the snow. They sneak up. They on don't people. turn they white. It just worked out in their favor. <laughs> they don't. It's not like they're just. A, they turn white over time. That's natural selection. Anyway. I know, but that but they don't go just. I'm white yeah. now. Like they. <laughs> I'm Charles Darwin over here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not a chameleon. It's not like superpower. Right. right. If it was a superpower, then I would get it. I do Tiger, think polar bear. I know. So a tiger is just, you know, a tiger is, this is what a tiger loves. He loves it. But he loves the hunt. He loves, loves the, the hunt. game. Yeah. But when we're in grizzly bear conversation, we don't think tiger could take a grizzly bear, right? Well, don't get ahead of herself here. Yeah. Grizzly yeah, bear. This we might were, be coming up. I have a problem with this 16. bracket because it's not like a 16 against a one. They got these little weak animals yeah. against each other. Now a tiger and a polar bear. Yeah, this is Duke, North Last Carolina. Last week it was a bear against a gorilla. Round. Right. So right. these should be coming up later, but whatever. All right. These are two ferocious animals that both should make the final four. I agree. Here's what I – look, I think pound for pound, polar bear all day. I think a tiger's super smarter than a polar bear. Mm-hmm. Tigers are big, too. And they're Yeah, they're big, and they're just – like a polar bear, to me, feels – like so, you got snow and you got they're both their elements. I think that I don't think the tiger would. I think the tiger could lure the polar bear into the tiger's element, oh, and I then it's how over. long are these fights? I don't think the days, polar huh? bear would leave the snow. It's in the Coliseum. You don't think? I, I don't think so. And he would make the tiger come over. And the tiger would be cocky and go, you know what? I'm gonna see what's going on over there. Oh no, I, the polar I, bears are really mean, aren't they? I think so. Uh, I don't think a ti- tiger's sweet though. <laughs> Yeah, but like other bears will avoid you if possible. Don't polar bears like come looking for a fight? I mean, I think they're trying to eat. Yeah, you know, it's it's a cold world where they live. They need to find stuff to eat. They need to eat a seal. They need to eat a walrus. Penguin. Look, y'all can vote me. I would vote tiger. Y'all can you can vote me out if y'all want. I'm going polar bear. I go bear. I go tiger. Mm. Jeez. Mm. All right. Mm. Mm. Well, we need a deciding vote from. Can we look up any research, or we just got to go? On I a- guess we could look up. Uh, uh, I guess if it's a. Yeah, yeah let's just see what I mean, happens. We'll see. We'll see what the experts think on Cora. The polar bear has an advantage in terms of jaw strength, skin thickness, and power. Mm. However, the Siberian tiger is the best in terms of speed, maneuverability hunting experience and behavior so they just what a cop out that is right yeah no that's but that's the truth is that's what i mean that i think look i think a, a i think a polar bear does not want to fight it's never in fights polar bears live alone tigers are just on the grind dude they are in fights all day long this is what they do they have to fight they across so many other animals a polar bear is living in its bubble up at the top, it's it, no one's even no one can touch it because it's uh, the, it, there's nothing up there to even challenge it. A tiger think, is it, is being challenged. I mean, like I think this pick though has the uh, a wolf in the mouth of the polar bear. Ugh. Well, let's don't look at that. Yeah, yeah but that's not. But I'm he, saying that's a challenger, a wolf. We're, uh, we're even not a out. not a big not a big challenger. Well, look how much bigger tall. the bear is. Yeah, here's a good size comparison. A, the, the polar bear is almost twice. It's t- over twice as 
tiger, more than twice. Yeah, dude, a tiger fights. It fights regularly. It's actually in the Coliseum. Well, how do you think a polar bear gets food? Did you get this? This picture is actually them in the Coliseum. It does look like them yeah. in the Coliseum. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, but you don't think a polar bear has to earn every meal? It's hunting. Yeah, dude, we have to earn every meal. I got to go drive to the grocery store. <laughs> it's. But you're acting like the tiger is fighting every day. Polar bear just sits back, drinks Coke, and hangs out. No, the, the tiger <laughs> is, I would say, is in a rougher neighborhood. And oh, dude! And a polar bear is the tigers in paradise. No, they have so the tigers got a thousand animals around it. A polar bear has what? Just the animals it eats around it. Wolves. So it has to hunt. The but great it, white wolf. But it's it, you saying a tiger is not an apex predator. What preys on a tiger in the jungle? Oh, I think uh, you have. I think other tigers fight each other more than polar bears. I think polar bears all get along with each other. <laughs> I think very stuck up, <laughs> and I don't think they ever fight. Uh, I would say a tiger, you know, you got pumas, you got lions, you got bears. I mean, you know, they're just around a lot of stuff, man. All right. That's why I say a tiger. Okay. Do we get, should we get the tiebreaker vote from the, from the crew here? I don't know. What do you think? Are are you changing your mind? The polar bear is so much bigger than the tiger. Mm. Kind of sways me a little bit. Well, there's three of them, so we'll let. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking? I'm going polar bear. Okay, well, you don't get a vote, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going polar, polar bear. bear. All right. All right. I we got that, the, well, I just the reason I think polar bear yourself. so much is because we spent so much time talking about grizzly bears and what could take them, and ultimately we decided nothing takes the grizzly bear. So I think the polar bear can't fall far below. Grizzly, the grizzly bears bear. are super aggressive, so you're not thinking of any. Uh, of the of the of the animal like grizzly bears are super aggressive and super like dominant and so that's why they could beat a polar bear because a polar bear is very right. weak well they would beat the and polar bear it has no motivation i don't think it's that weak dude yeah, it has no motivation <laughs> you see them in the zoo polar bears polar bears have, that's why they got in the condition they're in now because they're weak. struggling to live. So they're right, up, no, they're up there. They let themselves get just broke off a piece of ice yeah. to float out to the ocean. <laughs> they don't even realize that's happening. That's yeah. how long they sit. They yeah. sit long enough that ice melts and breaks off and floats in the ocean. They don't get moving. And he goes, well, how long did you sit there? Six months? Well, think about this, though. Rocky and Rocky Four trained in the snow so that he would be stronger. And that's what the polar bears live in every day. Yeah. Yeah. Polar bears just, it's... It's never it. Uh, you have the eye of the tiger, though. It doesn't know like well, that's true. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, Ooh, it nice. doesn't know like the thing it hunts <laughs> is seals, and like they all stick out so much. Penguins stick out so much. Uh-huh. Like a tiger has to hunt stuff that's hiding. A uh, polar bear just is like. Boo, boo, boo. Oh, I'll go get that. Uh, there's only one little oh. dot I see. Let me go over there. <laughs> well, maybe because I'm in a sea of just white. Maybe the and audience I, can add in, and maybe we change it next week. If yeah, we, if we, decide. I would say the yeah. Can we it's do a, a shame poll? the tiger is out in the first round? But can it's we, a shame the polar bear is out in the first round. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We could do. Uh, <clears throat> we could do a uh, yeah. You could do poll. Maybe some kind yeah, of Twitter do a poll. poll. Yeah, I say we're do yeah we're do a poll for any that we we kind of you know. We got the last matchup of the day here on this side of the bracket. It looks like a great white shark versus an orca whale a, or killer a killer whale. whale. No one says the orca whale. <laughs> I say killer uh, whale. You, an you, orca. No one says orca. Everybody says killer whale. Oh, people call it orca all the time. They yeah, the nerds after that are like, <laughs> the, yeah, the, I don't know, the guy at SeaWorld might say orca. <laughs> and everybody's like, all right, but what are we? The average, per, the person saying killer whale. But the the irony of that, the reason that's bad is that it's the killer whale is not actually a whale. It doesn't matter. It's <laughs> I didn't know that. I know. Yeah, well, you can't. What is it? Can't I don't hide. remember. I, I did a report on killer whales back, or excuse me, orcas <laughs> back in like fourth or fifth grade. I remember learning that. Uh, you can't hide Notre Dame. It just comes out, doesn't it? <laughs> this is fourth grade. Uh, killer whales are. Orcas. No one says orca, dude. Like no one <laughs> goes to SeaWorld and goes, let's go check out the orcas. I would you know, most people would go, Well, I don't want to go see the orcas. I want to go see Shamu, killer whales. Yeah. 
Yeah. And they go, well, that's what I called because I went to college. <laughs> And then kind of oh, okay, you know they're not even whales, and you just well, I think I got this wrong. Fun. It, it says, okay, a killer whale is a toothed whale belonging to the oceanic dolphin family. And it, okay, just so a little bit of both, part so, dolphin, so, part, yeah, part it's, whale. It's kind of like a half Mixed dolphin, it up. half and like yeah, I'm a whale, there. but I'm in the dolphin family. Yeah, mm-hmm. dude, yeah, pick a side, huh? Yeah, <laughs> been adopted by the dolphins. Yeah. So what do you think? It, yeah, you can, it floats around that he goes like, no, I was raised as a dolphin. Like he's trying to make <laughs> right. you feel bad. Like right. <laughs> it's the world everybody wants to be a victim. He goes, oh, I was a dolphin. He goes, you know, the dolphins are getting killed. He goes, I, I'm a dolphin. And <laughs> right. you go, all right, you're 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 kind of related to the dolphins, but <laughs> yeah. you know what we mean. Uh, I think it's kill whale all day. Kill I whales so are, are ruthless. Yeah, I, I mean, think they, so this, too. Is, this is, again, they what kill, they do. They just beat seals for fun. Yeah. I mean, they just For throw. Fun. They just throw no. them up in the air and yeah. play with them. And I mean, the seals not having fun, but they yeah. are. Yeah, they're brutal. Well, this isn't a question of which is more morally reprehensible. <laughs> this is who would win in a fight. But it, that that plays into it. So, uh, okay. you know, if you got if you got one of them that's got to kind of plays by the code, which I feel like the great white shark is kind of like. We have order in the ocean. Yeah, it's old and school. In it's, that way. it's yeah, right. it's a little old school kind of way. And a killer whale's like, I don't. This is what we do. Do we just are a problem? They would be sparring a little bit, and the the shark would be like, "Well, chill out, dude. Don't take it <laughs> yeah. that serious." The killer whale would try to touch gloves, and the I mean, the great white would try to touch gloves, and the and your orca would just like, yeah, would be like, "I'm not touching your glove." Grab him by the tail, yeah. flip him up. Yeah, would fake touch gloves with him, and then. And then go yeah. and get them. What do you think, Brian? I mean, I agree. I, yeah. Again, it's a shame a great white shark's going out so early because they're getting... incredible predators. But right. a killer whale, I think, I think a killer whale is a lot bigger. Yeah, we lost a lot of uh, blue bloods here in the front round. Yeah, can't wait to see the eagle and the anteater fight. That's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we've got sizes from a killer whale to a barn owl. The piranha and the grizzly bear will be a good matchup. Yeah. Oh, man. That's going to that's gonna be over so quick, yeah. dude. The great thing about all these animals, all their different sizes, they could all sleep on a Helix mattress. Yeah. That is true. Right, Aaron? I think they probably could. And you know what's exciting talking about Helix mattresses is, uh, man, Dusty is all about them. Well, huh? I have a Helix mattress. Yeah. And I sleep on it. out out When I'm out at the cabin, I sleep on this mattress, and it just adds to the peace and tranquility that I have out there. I go out there to relax, mm-hmm. so sleeping on that Helix mattress adds to it. I mean, the pillows are the greatest pillows I've ever owned in my entire life. They are great pillows. And the mattress is uh Well, they have a lineup of over 14 wonderful. different unique mattresses, including a, coll- a collection of luxury models, a mattress for big and tall sleepers, and even a mattress made just for kids. I don't know if mine's luxury, but it yeah. feels like it. Is it made for kids? Probably not. Uh, my kid can sleep on it if she wants. Well, take the Helix Sleep Quiz and find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. They're shipped straight to your door free of charge with easy no-contact delivery. There's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it. They give you a 100 nights to try it out. And in the unlikely event that you don't like it, you can send it back. And unlike a lot of mattress companies out there, Helix owns its own manufacturing uh, facility. Each and every Helix mattress is made, you guessed it, right here in the United States of America. Helix supports military, first responders, teachers, and students by giving them a special discount on the site. So if you're one of those people, make sure to check it out for sure. They are offering up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free Unbelievable pillows. Dusty thinks they're the best pillows of all time. For our listeners, go to helixsleep.com slash Nate. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. That's helixsleep.com slash Nate. Uh, go to the other bracket. We're going to just do some more of this animal stuff. So we've uh, And I wanted to oh, – one more thing I want to yeah. say. Uh, very excited. I got, I got to travel with Nate. To Houston earlier this week, and I met Maria Shriver. Oh, All right. right. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Yeah. Big Maria Shriver fan. She was at the hotel. Nate knows her, and, and she was so nice. So nice. And just talked to us forever. And she has an impressive, impressive background. Yeah. Yeah. The Kennedy family. Mm-hmm. She's married to Arnold. Mm-hmm. Her Chris Pratt's her son in law. 
Yeah, it's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 And then Nate and I played a game where we saw who's the most uh, famous person in our Rolodex on our phone. Nate won slightly. <laughs> My most famous one that he didn't have is Neil O'Donnell, former NFL quarterback. That's pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to... I thought of one. I, I, uh, I, you know, I thought of one, too, uh, Bill Hader's number. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Who do we say was – uh, I mean, you have so many. It's hard. Yeah. Seinfeld, right? He has Seinfeld. Yeah, he has Jimmy Fallon. Be. Yeah, yeah. We could do a bracket for that. Just Nate's phone bracket. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. Had, he just kept name. I'm like, how'd you get that person's number? Dang, dude. Yeah, yeah. It was prompted. Yeah, I wasn't. I brought it up. He you brought it just up. Just flipping it out. Going, I didn't Let me just show you go, these numbers no, in here. No. I mean, I told Bates, I go, ask this at the table. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, he pulled me aside. Yeah. We posted a photo of us traveling together. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh yeah, fun. yeah. People like that, and uh, yeah, it was it, Bates did. Bates did great. He did great at the airport. <laughs> did great at the airport. He <laughs> actually he did really good. He did Bates. It was uh, the whole time was just he was along for the ride, like along, like just going, like oh, yeah. you know, just like yep, let's, I'll do what everyone do. I'll go eat where you want to go eat, like All you right. know, just like, very much along for the ride, and like All right. everywhere, and yeah, yeah, great job, super buddy. fun, super fun. <laughs> And he's not felt I well missed, since. I missed, uh, yeah, he hasn't felt. It was fun for us to go back out because we don't, because uh, we haven't done yeah. that in a while. So it was fun. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a good time. Yeah, old times, man. Mm hmm. Yep. You want to. The animal bracket really took yeah. a long time, didn't it? We really got into yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. We're just I think we're, we're gonna finish we're doing, it off. Yeah, just, yeah. Just time wise. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's let's, let's just do go, one more. Let's of these? do one more. Because I mean, we could we could continue some more bracket stuff. Uh, whether it be this animal thing or whatever it is, if people have ideas, I think this is kind of it's fun to talk mm -hmm. about. So here's what I'll say with this one. Uh, this is a uh, an ostrich. Is, is that an emu? It looks like an ostrich to me. I don't think it's an ostrich. Can you? <laughs> I think it's a. Can you it zoom it in? Yeah. Well, you can't zoom in. I, I'm zoomed in. Uh, you're right. You're right, Nate. Hmm. When it comes that's to an animals, emu. no, that's not emu. But it's a uh, zoom in. Can you zoom? I'm zoomed in. You all can't the, like all the way. Oh, here. you can't even zoom in more. And I'm zoomed in. Hold on. Quite, I'll be honest. Let me bit. look at this screen. I don't think, <laughs> regardless if it's an emu or an ostrich, it has. Uh, a chance. <laughs> yeah, why does it matter? <laughs> uh, it has zero chance because it's matched up against a male adult lion. Yeah, that's, that's not an ostrich. I think it's an, something. It's an yeah. emu, right? An emu, no, it ostrich. An emu. It was. Uh, uh, I, I'm thinking. What's the other? It's look at an emu. Um, it could be. I uh, don't. Is it? An, I don't. No, I don't like the look of emus. Yeah. That line. All right. Look. Here's what, here's, what, here's what I say. Uh, look up some facts about. Uh, there's not a bird. We think this on is an emu. Earth. Look up. So, look up some facts of emus. Some lions. I will. Take the emu side. So we can't just have this dominant. So who wants – I'm comfortable taking the emu side. Uh, who wants to take the lion side? Bates? Brian will. I'm going lion too. Right. There's zero uh, chance. I'll jump on my emu. All right. I'll jump on emu here. So we, we – we, I like this. You get I to like get talked debate. into – you get to get talked into. Five interesting facts about emus. Uh, an emu's feathers cannot – Cannot be so soft. That's not a good strong. <laughs> I mean, who like who wrote that sentence? The emu? Like he, an emu's feather cannot. Can you zoom yeah, in? Like, yeah. read it. An emu's an emu's feathers. I thought it said father at first. Uh, That's I probably true too. An yeah. emu's father cannot be so soft, so they grow up in hard times. Right, yeah. a chip it's on like, the shoulder. They grow yeah. up in hard times. A it lion can be soft, but it can't be. Too, cannot be too. An emu has been through it. A right. lion is like. You know, you're like you're the rich kid, right? That just and they're very family oriented. They got like nuclear families. They yes. all stay together. Yes, the, the lion grew up, no problems, no problems, no hardships, no hardships. And emu out of the womb, he's fighting, he's scrapping. Oh yeah, and his feathers. And the way he's <laughs> the way this emu wrote this, <laughs> it's it. They also can be soft. But they also cannot be so soft, right? So, like, I mean, it's not it's, always so soft. He's <clears> saying, <throat> yeah. listen, sometimes it is, but yeah. not all the time. 
Emus have the strongest legs. That's enormous. Yeah. Strongest yeah. legs. Big legs. It does what? not say if I compare, don't know what it compares to. No comparison, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> compared to an ostrich, yeah, an compared emu compared to the other birds. Yeah. But it has, so I'm assuming the strongest legs of anything and everything. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah, kicking, sure. the kicking power is wild. The yeah. running, power. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's going to translate to speed. Running too. away, it's it's. I mean, there's part of me that's going. A lion's going to go into this pretty cocky, and an emu is going to just this thing squats more than an up. elephant here. Like they're, you know, like this is like the piranha. Like emu feels like a piranha. Like it's just like, it's like a velociraptor. Yes. That is like a velociraptor like. beat a T-Rex. Yeah. So, you know, if when we had this bracket, you would say there's no way. Where? Yeah. On, in, in, in Jurassic Park. <laughs> I don't know. The movie. I don't know. It did? That. Yeah, it one does on one? at the end. The blue it beats the one. Well, then they fight at the end, but yeah, I think it does at the end. I don't know if it does, but <laughs> no, I think the T Rex. I think it yeah. did. T Rex is. Yeah, I guess they. Lisa Raptor is just like could just be. It's just all over. Like when something's so big, that's like when Royce Gracie used to fight the in old MMA stuff, and he'd fight like a big, big like sumo guy. It's like that gets so tired. But, but we just had a debate about a polar bear possibly losing to a Siberian tiger, but now an emu beats a lion. <laughs> well, we're taking the – I'm trying to make it fun. I think well, you no, got to uh, have some upsets here. Yeah, you got to have some and upsets. I, th I think this is – because it, this just happened in the tournament this year. The one seed comes in. Yeah, and uh, you know if they if they sleep yeah. if they take it for granted they're gonna yeah. go down. Go well, give me those other facts of the email. Let me read the rest. Well, let's of play them. the fight out. Right. Let's play the fight out. Well, let, I, I just want yeah, to finish the facts. Back they get the, more fun. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I was reading them, and some reason that prompted you to go to a different page. <laughs> well, they, they started to get bad. Literally, these facts. I said uh, that's why I want you to keep reading. Yeah, emus have a pouch <laughs> in their throat for communication. Now this is trash talk. I'd imagine some kind of like maybe walkie talkie, maybe the first next tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh they have a pouch in their throat for communicate. Like they Chirping. don't even waste their time for what do they put in that pouch? Their phone? <laughs> you know what it could bed. put in that pouch? Yeah. A weapon. Right, right. So now this emu, because it look at it. You think it's playing by the rules? No. There's no playing by no. the rules. That's cheating. It's an emu cheats. That anything can happen. So I think an emu has now got a probably a gun. Right, right. We're right. going to go ahead and say it. The emu brought a gun into this fight. The emu is armed. The emu does have a gun. So the emu gets a gun. Because <laughs> it, it, it has a pouch and it can hide it. And we did not right. check the pouch because we didn't know they had a Where's pouch. Where's a lion putting a gun? We Here's the problem. At, Emus don't have arms. So how's he going to shoot it? It does it anyway. It has, it's well, automatic. Uh, so look, it's, <laughs> look at this situation. Where's what I'm saying? The emu, because when you frisk, look at, you frisk something, you don't ever frisk someone's throat. That's true. So why would you frisk? We would be so busy in the feathers uh -huh. and we don't know that he's Which got. Which cannot be so soft. That yeah, yeah, that we go like I cannot believe how not soft this is. You might even cut yourself trying to get the gun yeah. out of there, and you're oh. just like shaking it, and just like some dust. It looks like you're shaking a you know dust is flying out, and you're like I think he's good, and we don't even know that in his throat mm -hmm. he has a gun. Right. So he brings a gun to this fight. All right, what's the next? Emu's feathers are more water resistant than other birds' feathers. This is not a bad thing because it's like it doesn't have to shake off. Like if they get pushed into the water, you know, a lion has to do like the dog. That's time. Mm -hmm. That's time. Right, right, right. This is he's got he's he's got dry fit on. They can jump seven feet and two point one meters straight up, straight up. That's seven a, feet is that's quite a good jump. That that's a big leap. We're not playing legs. basketball, but they jump up and then come down. Like so, when the lion runs, it jumps and then just comes down so hard yeah. on its head, and it has a gun. <laughs> It's it's it's. What if the lion has piranhas hidden in its mane? I don't think a, you. We would we would when we frisked we would feel that. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm saying we were going to frisk these animals to oh, make sure okay. they don't have weapons. But right. this thing has a pouch that none of us knew it had, and we would never feel someone's throat. 
Like you would just never be like, obviously, let's check its throat. We would check its beak, but, uh, and course. then we would go Open to the up, feathers. Can yeah. we see what the pouch looks like, though? Yeah, let me look that up. Because maybe uh, if you slip a gun in there, it's very transparent that there's a gun in there. I, don't, I think uh, well, you're like, oh, your Adam's apple looks a lot like a gun, Emu. No. no. You can't see it. What you got to imagine what it is. And I imagine, I'm, I picture it <laughs> like it's... Uh, it's it just you you have to you would never know that there was a pouch there. I agree. And you would think that their throat. Give me five. Uh, give me five interesting facts about lions. Okay. Here we go. Lions. Let me Make sure you don't zoom in and change websites often. <laughs> All right, yeah, here's some fun facts. Here. Five facts. Oh, that's a YouTube video. I don't want to watch here's a video. Fun facts about lions. There. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Many lions are so, just middle. Oh, that's not what I want. Oh, that was great. <laughs> Zoom in. Let me see. Uh, for many lions are just middle-aged men in fur suits. All right. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> a lion is just a like it's us, dude. A lion has no <laughs> anything in it. Like it's just you got to mean like a lioness. Like you know like. That like I feel like they got to do more. They got to take care of the kids. They got to do all that kind well, of stuff. Well, that's what everybody says about these lions. And again, this is a male lion that the emus fight. Yeah. Right. And now lions are famous for the the woman goes out and does all the work, and the male just sits there and chill. Lazy. He's, Lazy. He's been idle. Yeah. You know he can't move he's, well. Yeah. But he yeah. gets to warm up. Uh, you know, I think a lion is so arrogant that because it it is just never has a problem that I think it just sits, it just is going to be like, you know, it's going to be like when you stand up after this podcast and you're like, Ooh, <laughs> like it's like, imagine I will have that too. When I stand up after this podcast, it's going to be like, yeah, I haven't sitting too long. That's and an emu is already, it's already got its gun out. Uh, what's another, let's and, read another. Yeah. Well that, that list was terrible, but, here I, we got some. Uh, here is numbers. Let's look at the the numbers. They live sixteen to eighteen years. You don't live that long not beating off emus. <laughs> I mean, I think an emus. <laughs> I mean, that's true. You know, emus come yeah. running at you. You know, uh huh. Population is five hundred and twenty three. There aren't that many left. Yeah. They can't even survive. Yeah, they're endangered. Dude. Yeah, th these are not good facts. Well, I mean, they're yeah. king of the jungle for a reason. If these they're endangered, yeah. that's more reason to fight for your life. There's only a, a few of Lion's left. roar can be heard from eight yeah. kilometers away. I have no idea how that far that is, but that seems like a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but who cares? I mean, look, yeah, we know the lion's in there. It would blow the emus. The emu would be terrified. Fur back. Probably fire the gun in Guess its mouth. Guess what? Lions lose their manes when they get injured. Males tend to avoid a long maned rival. Who is like to be an uh, likely to be an undefeated combatant? So a, a lion sees those feathers, which cannot be yeah. so soft on the ear, yeah. and it thinks, "Dude, this it guy, goes, this guy, I'm staying away from this." It, mad it, man. it goes, "This dude, I don't want to fight this dude." Like <laughs> well, this guy. Well, if, under this argument, the anteater is going to go all the way then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, oh, maybe we might be. That's Ooh. for a different day. Though. That's a different, different day. We're not there yet. Uh, Okay, is there any? I mean, how far is there any other good? How far? Like, I can't believe this is the only facts we're jump? getting. Jump is it like? Yeah, we're, these are not great facts. Uh, that was fact six thousand six hundred. Let me see. <laughs> hyenas may attack an unhealthy lion. Lion doesn't compete for the same prey. I mean, a hyena is taking a lion. It may attack it. But. Uh, emu is the hyena of the bird. <laughs> it's got a little pouch. It's got a little pouch. The hyena. If a hyena is on this thing, I would expect a hyena also to have a gun. Are a weapon. Oh, I for think they sure. a hyena. Like you got a sure a hyena. But that's see. Here's the thing. We would we would know that we have to frisk the hyena super hard because we are like we know you're up to something. Mm -hmm. This is your existence. He's laughing the whole time. Your yeah, existence yeah. is you're like the Joker. Like you're just <laughs> your existence is you're going to do stuff. The emu. We think good luck, and we don't know he's got. Multiple guns. Uh -huh. He's got a John <laughs> Wick situation. No, he's, he's got a John Wick situation in his <laughs> pouch that. that we didn't know they had pouches. Now look, it's going to hurt him the next round after this. Sure, because sure. now we're aware of the pouch. Yeah, and we're gonna now we're like, well, we're gonna solve that, and we are apologizing to the Lion family because we did not know. <laughs> 
And the lion, they're going to sue us. The lion family is suing us now because they said it was, and we go, we didn't know. They're fighting to the death. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. we, we thought it was a lion, you know, and they're like, but he brought a weapon. And we go, I mean, we checked. You, Who's going to check the emu's neck? So the first round, I'm saying we don't know anything about this emu. Mm -hmm. The lion signed the waiver, so. The, the lion signed the waiver. Uh what does it say? Allowing them to reach heights of a up lion to, can jump up what? to twenty feet high. Oh, well, that was at forty-five seven feet, feet out of the water. Mountain mountain lions are known. All right, pumas or mountain lions are the best jumpers of all the mammals. Uh, Look, what is the, it? The jump is not even that important. How high they jump? I mean, it's a it's, fun trick to gun, be able to jump. The it's, gun is really the emu's only strength. It's that's what I and it's multiple guns. <laughs> yeah. it's a John Wick situation. I yeah. mean, the, that's this is what I'm saying. The if emu. This is the John Wick of emus. I'll go for it. But yeah. that's it is. But who's the lion? Is the lion Simba? Is it Scar? Is no, it the, Aslan. I mean, look at the the lion is just the lion's a lion, and I look. It would have won. Emu is just. It's just like. Are we even sure it's an emo? We're not even. <laughs> We're not even. Into, yeah. <laughs> but it's. It's not uh, an ostrich, though. I know that. Yeah. I think it's an emu. And uh, I'm going to go with the emu. I think it's got, you know, with the, it's got a gun. It brought a gun. It and brought multiple it, guns. How's it shooting the gun from its mouth? It it, it just does it. <laughs> and you, you and its feet, its strong feet. Yeah. And mm -hmm. like it's just. A, yeah. Like Real a, hard yeah. feathers. Yeah. Strongest yeah. legs. Yeah. And, it, and we just <laughs> are like, we can't believe. That he brought that gun, and we're and we have to have a serious talk about. We after this emu lion fight, we tell the animals no what no guns. We are going to be on high alert. That's what I, that's what I'm saying. The emu wins with a gun, yeah. and we've now had to make an announcement. Boom, we're going yeah. emu. All right. Oh, we, we're decided. We've gone emu. <laughs> well, you guys are not making much of a case. You're here. making I mean, no case. I mean, the case talking. is that it. You know, I mean, you know, we're we're saying that the emu has the ability to hide a gun, but we're really <laughs> counting that this lion can't hide anything. It's an honor. The lion comes in, and uh -huh. the lion comes in arrogant. This may not be an honorable lion, though. Uh, it is lion. This lion, lions, lion, lion, lion. It's a lion, yeah, lion. You yeah. know what I mean? It's a lions are honorable in the fact that they are. They they just don't. Nothing bothers them. And Emu I, like is is has been fighting for his life the whole time. Man. Could a could a handgun kill a lion? It's got a John Wick situation. So the guns are, it has all the guns. Multiple. Multiple guns, yeah. grenades. I mean, it does. <laughs> Listen, the puffer <laughs> fish may have a gun inside all that puffed upness. It didn't think about it when we uh -huh. talked about it. So it did not. So Too late now. The emu thought about it. So the emu wins. Go, what's the next, like. Uh, we got a few more here. Uh, we, this these, is, these will be quick, though. Yeah. It looks like we've got. Yeah, quicker than an emu versus a lion. <laughs> 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 These ones are way more gonna, obvious. I don't know. I don't. Uh, I, I can make them. Yeah. We're gonna make them. Uh, what do we have here? We've got a cheetah versus. It looks like just a wolf. Well, a cheetah cheats, and we know that. Mm, it's a cheetah and a wolf. Cheetah. It's the fastest land animal, obviously. It is. Doesn't help it much in the Coliseum, though. Well, it can. You know, it can run around. It can Coliseum run around. Floor is pretty big. There's room to run around. Yeah. Kind of wear him out and okay. a wolf my understanding just like the piranhas that the wolf's strength is that it, it usually travels in groups i could see right? that. a wolf yeah. pack if you will mm -hmm. yeah so i'm going cheat on this one and i think we're yeah. safe to move on uh, all right well all right i'm gonna, I'm gonna go wolf <laughs> you're going wolf see, yeah I, so i've been keeping notes i kind of think wolf too. here's my notes to i wrote honest. uh Dude. if you want to see my notes of uh <laughs> my can you read this his first notes with for an emu. <laughs> it just says gun. It just says gun. I think wolf. So that was that's was my positive for that. And the lion, I had nothing. So now let's see. I want to write a down wolf or a, a cheetah. I don't think it's just like a family dog. I and think, a wolf. I think it's a wolf. I'm going wolf. So let's see. Well, let's look at you which of the these cheetah. has been domesticated by human beings. So let's go. The only this, this, look, is wolf. this this cat. will be this will be the last one we do, and then <laughs> you think that so we're going to look into house it. cat. Yes. Yeah. So look up. Let's see if there's any facts about <laughs> cheetahs, and let's see what any anything that glares out. 
Because it is. The cheetah is a just can a run giant. run up to 70 miles per hour, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because it's been it's like just eight. running. And it chases weak animals. Yeah. Like, it doesn't bring down any big animals. It ch- it brings down, like, you know. Gazelles. Oh, I mean, a gazelle. I could, it's not chasing I could take a, wolf, a gazelle. I think I'm going with a cheetah, though. Wolves, they have to work together. I know, no, but I but a gazelle <laughs> is like. Are facts? You know what a gazelle is? You know hunting a gazelle is like? It's like the cheetah just goes to Publix and buys something. That's how easy it is to get a gazelle that has, you Dude, know. Dude, gazelles are, uh, are fast. That's all they are is fast. So that's, yeah. that's all they are. And so a cheetah. So they'd be hard to track a wo- down. A wolf has to, uh, like, wolf fight something that can run. real fight back. But what does a wolf eat? Oh, it eats uh, <laughs> cheetahs and, yeah. and emus. The it wolf, eats emus. The wolf the has a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The wolf does not have a gun. We've already outlawed. You're like Michael Scott, whenever you want to wave, just yeah. pull out a gun. We've already outlawed guns. The last fight was a <laughs> okay. nightmare. Okay. We did not. We are mortified. Yeah, I mean, the, the we, I mean, we, Vegas we, went wild when the emu beat, oh, beat the lion. We do not have the attendance for this fight is not high because yeah. people were like, this is rigged. An emu bought a gun last yeah. time and beat a lion. So we are we are trying to build back, and we are going – I mean, we've had a press conference, and we said no more weapons. <laughs> we are checking everywhere on these animals. Right, right. We're – you know, we did not think we should check an emu's neck. We didn't know they had a pouch. So we have – Thought it was just for communication. Yeah. <laughs> so we uh, – this is, this is a straight-up battle. So cheetahs are the fastest animals on land and can reach up to speeds of 113 kilometers. It doesn't even know miles per hour. <laughs> they weigh <laughs> a wolf is using miles per hour in pounds. Yeah. Right. This is using kil- like kilograms and all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> so we don't really even know what he weighs. No, they can they can only purr, not roar like lions. Like a cat. Yeah, dude. like a little house like, cat. A wolf. Let's do some facts of wolf. Wolves are <laughs> cheetahs hunt during the day. Wolves. Yeah, could, there you go. A wolf could win this whole thing. This is a night battle. You think a wolf could win this whole? Th- a wolf Dude, could take wolves down that are thing. a problem. They mm-hmm. are. Thi- I mean, a wolf is you know forty yeah. to one hundred seventy five pounds. pounds. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is what draw jaw yeah. rushing power. They are. I mean, oh. F- Oh, oh, yeah, they're German. not that much more than a regular German Shepherd. They're they're double, well, double, 1,500 well. square inch. Yeah. You know, everybody knows what that means. And <laughs> they're hearing, they can hear so much. Their sight is similar to human. <laughs> they're, they're, oh, my gosh, they got our eyesight. They got our eyesight. And they smell a hundred times uh, more. Yeah, well, how is eyesight going to be? I mean, you, they can see they the smell cheetah. that cheetah they coming can a see, mile. They, They're they on the floor of the coming. Roman Colosseum. They, they, a cheetah's sitting around eating chips. They can see some colors. <laughs> so then they see the spots. Are they fighting at night? Uh, in the it daytime. might go into the night. I, gotta, I, I think, think it. Oh, I think it's a nighttime. Yeah. I think this fight goes into the night because the so. wolf dude, lets it. it here's how weak ball. a wolf is, dude. Here's how weak a wolf is. In captivity, they live 13, 14 years, sometimes 18 years. In the wild, only five. Yeah, because they are battling it out, dude. Yeah, and not, and not succeeding. Other no, wolves. No, no. You got to travel with groups. That's the other thing, dude. These wolves only fight in groups. And now you're asking it to fight on its own. So here's your look. First of all, you're you're comparing like that would be like a, a UFC fighter like if you're going you're you're cheetah you're like well it's undefeated you're like it ain't fault nobody this wolf's <laughs> got losses and you're like this wolf's fighting everybody dude it's fighting bears it's fighting lions yeah, but did you see bears, did you dude. see the Bourne movie with Jeremy Renner he yeah. took out a wolf and he lost to a snowplow so. I think a cheetah could. Yeah, that got the random people hikers take out wolves all the time. Uh, Sometimes with cheetah, their bare hands. a cheetah will chase down a gazelle, kill it, and then the wolf comes and takes the meat. Yeah, from oh, the from the cheetah yeah. runs the cheetah off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's a mooch. It's not even doing any of the no, because it's dominant. Yeah, because it just knows what to do. A cheetah can just run mm. fast. That's it. They're not mm. that. They're very light. They're not big. All they can do is run fast. A wolf is is heavy. Is just I don't know. Like Let's a take a look at thing, Cheetah's dude. mouth, dude. Get you tell me you want to get. You tell me that can't uh, take a wolf out. I have petted a cheetah. <laughs> I have in my life. Oh. I've petted a cheetah. <laughs> Where? Where did you pet a cheetah? In uh, and was it legal to do so? I don't know if it was legal to <laughs> it do was a so, big cat. but I have petted a cheetah, and I petted a cheetah, and I wasn't even. And there was multiple cheetahs in there. I didn't even. <laughs> I didn't even look around. I kept my hood up. 
because I just wasn't. That's how <laughs> unafraid I was of them sneaking up. Someone goes, shouldn't you have it down? What if one sneaks behind you? And I go, oh, I'm sorry. I had my headphones on. <laughs> I go, I'm sorry. I wasn't even. That's how little fear I had. Because their hearing's not that good anyway. Yeah, right. No, I'm yeah. saying like I, I didn't even feel like I had to worry about uh -huh. that. I'm, I'm like, uh -huh. let it come up. And what's it going to do? Purr against me? Like nothing's going to happen. But then, then we got told... We heard there's a wolf two states over. We went inside because they – and they go, it's a lone wolf. Lone wolf is the name. Lone wolf. Lone that's why wolf. it's a name because they travel in packs. But that's why it's a name because it's, because it's an oddity. I know. It's, it's rare, an anomaly. But that, a lone wolf is dangerous. It's dangerous. Well, that's a cheetah's a mouth wolf. right there. Uh, Yawning. Me that, Let me tell you what. That running at you at 40 kilometers right. an hour? You're, the only picture you have of a cheetah's mouth is it's laying down <laughs> yawning. <laughs> that's the only. That's the the the. That's how the relaxed scary, it is. Because show not me scared. a wolf. Show me a wolf's. He's uh, laughing. Look, they're la all laying down because the only time they get it is yawn. He's relaxing after a nice meal that he earned. He's laying oh, flat on his back. Down. He's in laughing because he's uh, finding an emu in the next round. Yeah. <laughs> no. He's with no gun now. Yeah, with no gun. <laughs> this he, guy's just advancing left and right. <laughs> go go show a wolf like. You're, I, you're under it. Like this is, you know, some of these have been fun, but I don't think you understand how much a, how great a wolf is. I, th I mean, I think I have an idea of what a wolf is. <laughs> I like that you head. went right to wolf attacks. <laughs> look, oh, do do a size of a wolf, and look how big that is. That dude. is scary. I think that's that's. So, I mean, that's like a bear. <laughs> look at that compared to that dog. Yeah, that is a big wolf. <laughs> I mean, do a wolf and versus a. Uh, I mean, do a wolf cheetah side by side. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean dude it, you're, you're gonna be so in, much. you're being oh, embarrassed oh man look at the title of this and video it runs for its life cheetah attacks a wolf <laughs> and then runs for its life it's uh, yeah it goes after it then it's just you look how over. unbelievably fast it is dude speed does not help it win this fight it's got a fight where is this fight happening at? Is this yeah. just somebody's just backyard? Some backyard guys wow. Like, man, they are really going yeah. after it. Holy cow, dude. <laughs> These are people. And they're just yeah. chasing them. This is like people that really, they have this conversation, and then someone's got so much money that he goes, I can make this happen. <laughs> yeah. I already got them here. <laughs> yeah. Just do side by side. Uh, yeah, yeah. Google images. Yeah. Google images side by side. Cheetah wolf. I mean, just the, the big wolf. The size different. The size difference of a, you know, you can't go some like easy wolf. You know, like we're we. This is a big one. Uh, yeah, I mean, here they are standing next to you. That, no, no, no. But that, go, go back to the picture of the wolf. That <laughs> that's we, a wolf right there. What are you talking about? What's the picture of the wolf? Look in at the his tail down. He's scared. In the bracket, what's the picture of the it's wolf? A black oh, wolf, in the yeah. bracket, here's the picture Sheeta of the wolf. Versus it's a wolf. black wolf. Yeah. So type in a black wolf. Okay. <laughs> African American <laughs> wolf. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, so where are we looking? Gray wolf, he, giant cheetah. I mean, you, your your cheetah looks he, regular. The cheetah, the cheetah is not. I thought it would be markedly bigger than the the wolf, and it's just not. And I apologize about yeah. that. Yeah, dude, a wolf. But the is, size has never been my main concern about this. It's about speed. It's about agility. My main heart. concern is who will take the emo in the it's, next round. No, I mean, that's, <laughs> it's dude. The power. The wolf is like the power of a wolf. It's like a heavyweight fight versus a light heavyweight. Like, and the wolf is patient. A cheetah just runs with its head cut off. A wolf a, is patient. A wolf it howls is when it doesn't have what it wants. I mean, it's just <laughs> no. A, it lets you know baby. that it's there. No, it lets you know that it's there. A okay. cheetah only can chase down like weak animals. Like a wolf, dude is look. Uh, we're going to you know we're going to end on this and we're going to we're not clicking it we're going to think about it okay uh okay. and then we're going to when we uh when we get back into this uh I'm going to let you I'm going to let you think about it I'm going to let you think about it you you right. need to think about it cuz you're you're being crazy right now <laughs> you know you're, you're being right. unrealistic in all this okay <laughs> you need to think about what you're doing yeah. Yeah, with I'm your sorry. life I'm yeah. sorry we're trying to be this is an honest argument this you're is right. a, this is an honest debate. You're right. I'm trying to play the game. This is very serious. Okay. And you're not and you're not being serious. You're right. Sorry I've taken it completely serious. Pull it together. You to figure out what you're doing with yourself. Figure out what's going on. Emu had a gun. <laughs> That's how serious I am.
<laughs> uh, all right. We love you, everybody. Oh, can I? Can I? No, uh, no, Dusty. <laughs> plug a thing. Dusty, you have a gun on you. I do have a gun. <laughs> you do have. I have a gun. several. <laughs> no, we can all plug. Yeah, my communication pouch. Uh, yeah. Uh, where's mine? Lot of, uh, I'm on tour. With Williamsport, Pennsylvania, coming up. Nice. Make check that one out. That one needs. Uh, it's good, but it could use some could use some love. Uh, yeah. You We're get uh, Muncie. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, a bunch of stuff. Anyway, yeah. yeah. This Friday, I'm in uh, Chattanooga at Clear Creek Church of Christ. It's a date night event. Um, I think it's just for the church, but I want people to know I'm working. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. I'm promoting it. Uh, next week, April 27th, I believe, I'm in Napanee, Indiana, at the Round Barn Theater, which is pretty exciting. Uh-huh. And then one quick, one more quick thing. I'm going to California doing uh, two improvs out there. Ontario and <laughs> how heavy are those hands, dude? It's if if, if for people if for people listening at home, Aaron was holding a pin, and when he went to like make his point, he hit the the back of the pin, and it and his hand is one finger apparently weighs more than all the other fingers. Flicked the pin, he Pretty couldn't hard. even. He couldn't even <laughs> hold on to it. Oh. And this is your man for Cheetah. Go ahead. Irvine Improv, Ontario Improv in May. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Those are great clubs. Out. Yeah, I'm pumped. Okay, hey, uh, May 13th, I'm going to record a special, my first one-hour special at the Bijou Theater in Knoxville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's very exciting. So the weeks leading up to it, I got a lot of shows. I'm going to be in, uh, you know, uh, Nashville, uh, Dallas, Texas, Conway, Arkansas, Springfield, Missouri, uh, lots of places leading up to filming this May 13th, Bijou Theater, Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah. Boom. Awesome, man. Uh, yeah. And then look, the showcase, we're filming uh, a- April 24, 25, 26. Yeah, it'll be, uh, this will be the last episode before that happens. Yes. So, awesome. so uh, if you don't have tickets, come out to that. Uh, all three of these guys are hosting each one of the shows. Uh, great, great comics. A lot of local comics. But it's comics fun uh, coming in for that. Uh, so uh, we're going to give you a, a, a... They're just very funny comics, and uh, I can't wait for that to come out. And uh, so if you're in Nashville, you can make it. Come to You can come to all of them or come to one. But, I mean, they're all going to be different. Right. Uh, so, uh, all right. That's it, right? Everybody feels good? Feel yep. great. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bridgetone was unbelievable. You made it uh, a, a dream come true. And I, uh, again, like I said, then none of us can pay you back for all that you have done for us in listening to this. We love you, and uh, we'll see you uh, next week. Bye. Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetsy, and my wife, Laura, on the Audio Boom platform. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast. <laughs>